These are the beautiful Sierra Nevada Mountains and Yosemite National Park. Overlooking the fertile San Joaquin Valley and the city of Fresno, the site of today's 7th Annual California Bowl. Stadium in Fresno, California for the 1987 California Bowl. Today, the Mid-American Conference champion Eastern Michigan Hurons meet the Pacific Coast Athletic Association champs, the San Jose State Spartans. Today's game is being brought to you by Michelob and by the Fresno Convention and Visitors Bureau and by Buick and your Buick dealer, the Great American Road belongs to Buick and by Delta Airlines. Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Papa. Today's the day for football wives and girlfriends to run for cover. The college football bowl season begins, this being the first of 18 to come your way. But it is a bit unique. It is one of only two in the country that locks both schools in through conference affiliation, of course, the other being the Rose Bowl. Let me bring in my partner, Stan White, Ohio State linebacker, who unfortunately knows all about the Rose Bowl. Stan, this game, in more ways than just that, is similar to a Rose Bowl. Well, it sure it is. It's a contrast of styles. The Midwestern teams that like to run the football against the pass happy California teams. And sadly to say, from my standpoint, the California teams have had their ways in both bowl games the past several years. You can see Eastern Michigan, 60% of their offense on the ground, San Jose State, nearly three quarters of their yardage in the air. Now, Eastern Michigan's numbers may even be more dramatic today, Stan. They feel they have to run the ball against that Spartan attack in 46 defense. And they have the guys that can run the football. Ron Adams is able to run the option as well as to scramble from aborted pass attempts. And, of course, they have Gary Patton, who's gained 1,000 yards in both the last two seasons, all MAC, both years. He'll get the ball a lot today. And the reason they want to run is to keep it away from the Spartan offense. Mike Perez to Guy Liggins, a deadly duo. Well, Mike Perez, second in total offense in the country this year. Guy Liggins, second for Receptions. They can go long, they can go short. I'm sure we'll see that combination time and time again today. All right, that's what Stan and I think. Now let's find out uh, from two guys who really have an opinion, the two head coaches. We have to play to the, to the very top of our, of our ability. Uh, San Jose is truly a, a, a top 20 football team. And I think Krez and Liggins and some of those kids even take them a notch up. And, and that's... Uh, that's what we think in our in our conference that Ron Adams and Gary Patton do for us is take us a little notch up. But it, we haven't proven to ourselves or anybody that we can play Pac-10 or Big Ten football teams. And, and uh, so we have to play to that level. Uh, we'd like to believe we can. And so I think that's the key is that we have to play to the very top of it and prove to ourselves and everybody else that we can play that caliber of football. I know these guys are good. They're a good football team. They're well coached. They have more speed than, you know, I think the typical team back there. And uh, they can do it well, both running and passing. And, and they play awfully good defense. So I, I think it's going to be a good matchup. Well, it, well, it should be. AP has the Spartans 24th in the country, Eastern Michigan 27th. Kickoff is next, Eastern Michigan and San Jose State. Well, you know the bad news. Charlie Carlson is in the meeting of his life, and his shirt is perfectly dry. But that doesn't mean he smells good. Because Under Armour motor is invisible, he needs total protection. Sure, solid. If everyone would take Sure not only helps protect against wetness, it actually kills bacteria that cause odor. So, Charlie, why go to work with a dry shirt and a false sense of security? Use Sure Solid and be just as sure about odor as you are about wetness. Just in time, American Express introduces Purchase Protection. It ensures almost any retail item you buy with the card for a full 90 days in case it's accidentally damaged, stolen, or simply flies away. You don't buy this protection. It comes automatically only with the American Express card. Membership has its privileges. 
ESPN and Thrifty Car Rental World Tour Sweepstakes want to take you to Hawaii in February. Ten lucky couples will go to Honolulu for an all-expense-paid week of sun and fun, including tickets to the NFL Pro Bowl. To enter, watch NFL Primetime Sunday nights and NFL Monday Monday nights to catch the winning slogan. Pick up your entry form at participating Thrifty Car Rental locations or write the slogan on a card with your name and address and mail to World Tour Sweepstakes, Post Office Box 912, Ridgely, Maryland, 21683. If you're an ESPN and Thrifty Car Rental World Tour winner, Continental Airlines will fly you and the guests to Honolulu, where you'll enjoy a week of sun, surf, and Pro Bowl festivities. Whenever you travel, use Thrifty's convenient service in over 650 locations worldwide. Experience the driving luxury of Chrysler cars. Thrifty, near the airport, not near the price. So send your entry in today and join the world tour in Hawaii. The college football bowl season is set to begin. San Jose State at 10-1 champions the PCAA to kick off to Eastern Michigan. 9-2, the champs of the Mid-American Conference. Sergio Alvarez kicks off for underway from Fresno. Leonard Smith, number nine, from his 10-yard line. And he has a hole, a huge hole. Alavera is the only guy that can uh, bring him down. He breaks that, and now he's shoved out with the help from Jay Taylor. As Taylor's a great, quick defensive back, 47-yard kick return for Glenard Smith, who averages only 20 of all games. So Ron Adams and the Hurons have great field position. Adams starting his 22nd consecutive game as the Huron quarterback, Cole, most valuable player, along with their tailback, Gary Pat. Big play has the Hurons on the Spartan 42 stand. It sure does, and that's what they need. Big plays win football games. We see something new right away. If it's a wishbone, Greg, they're going to try to establish that running game. They go to the bone, something they have done inside the opponent's 20, but they do it to begin the ball game, trying to throw this Spartan 46 defense off balance. And they pitch to Bob Foster, the tailback. He is dropped there by Greg Cox, along with Yepi Pa'u'u. There's Pa'u'u. They call him the Tongan hitman, second leading tackler on this Spartan club. Offensive backs for the Hurons, Chuck Nash, Gary Patton, and also Bob Foster on as they go to the wishbone. Ostrander and Ziegler, two good route runners. Offensive line is big. Evan Hicks goes 325. And Brian Klaus next one of the best two linemen the Hurons have. They play on the right side. They go to the wishbone again. First down brought no yardage. Second and ten. Adams a fifth year senior from Taylor, Michigan. And he pitches to Gary Patton. And he's shoved out of bounds by Phil Fresh, a senior left quarterback from Bakersfield for the San Jose State Spartan defense. They throw, play a three-man line of this 46. Hutcherson, Guthrie, and Kukini. The linebackers, the strength. The two inside guys are exceptional. Barry Kidney and Yepi Pa'u'u. The DBs are led by number seven, Jay Taylor, who saved possibly a kick return touchdown. He's very quick, and Greg Cox is a monster in the secondary playing rover back, a ferocious hitter. They have a third down at five coming up. Patton picked up five. They stay in the wishbone. Nash with Foster and Patton behind. Quarterback Adams. They jump offside. Tim Wells does. Flags go down. Foster fumbles the football, and Jay Taylor has it for San Jose State. But they jumped offside. The question now, were they drawn, or did they jump on his own? Uh, no, I think he jumped on. He went on sound, tried to make that big third down play defensively. You'll see it at the bottom of your screen right there. He's on the ground, obviously, when the ball is snapped. He knows he has a free play here, so he makes a, a, a ill-advised pitch a little too close to him, hits him right on the shoulder pad and goes down. But it'll be enough for a first down. It was just a little less than five on third down. That's a backbreaker for San Jose State. Offside against the defense. It's exactly what, uh, what Jim Harkeman wants, though. Make those third down plays because he's got to keep the football. Eugene Wirtz, our referee, and all of these officials come from the Western Athletic Conference. 
which, like the PCAA, is a passing conference, Stan. The MAC is a run conference. Would that have any factor favoring San Jose State, do you feel? Well, you never know what uh, some built-in biases or prejudice. We all have them. You never know how that's going to be. Obviously, they're all from the West Coast. Uh, uh, hopefully, though, sometimes it works both ways. Sometimes they overcalled against the team you would think they'd be for. Well, Tim Wells' mistake has the Hurons at first and 10 from the Spartan 32. Here's Bob Foster. He's inside the 30. And he's dropped at about the 28. Bill Frash again stepped up to make the play. He is their sixth top tackler on a couple of interceptions, bringing down Bob Foster. One, we'll go ahead, Stan. One thing this wishbone does, it gets both Patton and Foster into the game. Two excellent running backs. You know, they've been alternating quite a bit this year. And you don't lose a whole lot with Foster. Almost had 500 yards on his own in a backup role. He'll be their main man next year as Patton is a senior. And for the first time, the handoff of the fullback, Chuck Nash, the freshman ball carrier. He was brought down by Yepi Pa'u'u. Nash is starting again this week. He is forced to play since week five when Steve Palmatier, their top fullback went down in week five with a knee injury and Nash is a true freshman and a walk on what a great story there that is a story a kid that uh, moved to Georgia his senior year didn't like it down there quit didn't even play football came back and all of a sudden now he's starting in the Cal Bowl just a year later well they break the bone here on third and three go to the eye formation two wide receiver alignment Adams first pass of the game it's a dump to Foster or pardon me to Patton he has the first down and he's out across the 20-yard line. Patton is a good receiver. Didn't use him as much receiving this year as last year. 15 this year, last year, 37. It goes down as a pass, but really it's not more than a toss. Just a delayed action on the toss. He gets a blocker out in front of Patton. It's more than just a running play with a quarterback throwing the ball overhand. Ryan Rasnick shoved Patton out of bounds just shy of the 20-yard line. it inside the 15 Adams down to the 11-yard line Ryan Rasnick again makes the tackle and Stan so far the wishbone attack has worked exactly the way Jim Harkema the Eastern Michigan coach had this thing diagrammed well you took the words right out of my mouth it's exactly what he wants to use up as much time as he can keep the ball on the ground keep that clock running and still score some points and pick up positive yardage on first down you don't want to get into a second and ten a second and nine against the Spartan defense with the blitzing they can come to the two backers then you're in trouble exactly. now they have a second and one ideal they stay to the bone and they hand off the fullback Nash he crossed the ten that he was shoved back we'll see where they spotted I think he has the first down at the nine yard line where Yepi Pa'u'u and Greg Cox make the tackle but I tell you, Greg, they're at the toughest place in, on the football field right now to score from the nine-yard line. You've got to get all the way into the end zone. Uh, you'd much rather have a chance to get a first down inside the 10. Now they've got to go all the way. This first down play is very important on whether they'll get a touchdown out of this or try to uh, have to end up trying a field goal. Now this was the point on the field where during the regular season, Eastern Michigan went to the wishbone inside the 20, and they were very successful with it. Now they're inside the 10. They face the first and goal from the nine. Nash with Patton and Foster behind. That's Bob Foster, and he picks up good yardage on first down inside the five before Greg Cox stepped up along with Barry Kidney. Excellent power football off the wishbone. It's not an option. This is just a power play. You give it to the off halfback with the other two backs leading you through. They just blew back that uh, defensive line of San Jose State. Now, obviously, these guys aren't that big up front. No. You're talking about 248, 236, 233. In fact, they call themselves the Ant Patrol because of their size. That's part of the reason Harkema went to the wristband figuring his team could beat him up. Here's Patton, and he shoves himself down near the goal line. I believe he's just shy of the goal line. That'll bring up a third down. Yepi Pa'u'u. It's and just, Mike Hutcherson make the tackle. Just flipping it over the other side. Again, just power football. Watch him just carry Pa'u'u, the tongue and hitman. It looks like he scored from that angle, but the official said that he bounced into the end zone. They got the ball just about a foot short of the goal line. 
appeared his helmet got across, but of course the ball does have to go across. Jim Harkema, near unanimous Mac coach of the year. This is a third down and one. We played 5 10, and his team has had the ball the whole while. One of the Spartans may have jumped. No flag down. Now a flag is thrown. And they did not say he got in. They held him. San Jose State held. But again, flags are down. And they say there might even been a fumble. Uh, they're, they're celebrating like they recovered a fumble, but I think it was an obvious offsides on San Jose. They're coming out there. Pau's coming out with the football, but I think they're going to call it back. You're right. David Knox stuck his helmet in there, but it's going to be disallowed. Offsides again against San Jose State. Now, the Spartans, far and away this year, the most penalized team in college football. 133 penalties stand for 999 yards. That is quite a bit. Claude Gilbert's not real upset with that because it is part of the aggression on defense. They have offside against the defense, half the distance, still third down. Well, this is one of the 1,000-yard barriers you don't like to cross because they're over 1,000 right. now in, uh, in penalty yardage. Plus, it gives them another play to score on. They did get the football in the fumble that game. He doesn't mind the aggressive penalties, but certainly two offsides. Those aren't, yeah, not in this situation. Yeah, that's going to kill him. First and goal. Actually, third and goal. From the one. That's Bob Foster hurdling up. And there's the signal. Touchdown, Eastern Michigan. It took him two thrusts to get in. They had him stopped in the first thrust. You'll watch and you'll see it's the second thrust that gets him in. It's just this basic power play. Right there, he stopped. Now watch the second thrust. Oh, right yeah. there, it gets him into the end zone. He wanted to score, and he got the ball in, and that gives Eastern Michigan the lead in this game, and that's important for them to get that lead. See right there, he stopped. Now watch his second lunge right there. Okay, gets in the end zone. They're on the board first. They need to establish the ground game first. They did. They need to get a lead. They did. Now it's up to their defense to do something. Tim Hennigan, who was hit 31 of 34 extra points, is on. Quite a first series for Eastern Michigan. Big kick return. They drive 42 yards and score on a one-yard dive. 9.39 to play. First quarter. It is the Huron 7 and the Spartans nothing. The event, the prestigious black and white ball. The place, the cultural heart of Northern California's wine country. And the wine served. Why, Cribari, of course. Wines of tradition. In 1859, Isaac Cook created a great American champagne to launch the great American clipper ships. Today, people are still launching celebrations with Cook's Imperial American Champagne. Cordless power tool system more professionals use to work around the house or even build one. Makita is all the power you need. Today's California Bowl is being brought to you by the number one ski boot in the world, Nordica. Reach a new high. And by the American Express card. Membership has its privileges. Don't leave home without it. Greg Papa, Stan White, Bulldog Stadium, Fresno, California, and the Eastern Michigan Hurons, a most successful first five and a half minutes of play as they go in, cap off a 42-yard, 10-play drive, which chewed up 521 and leads 7 nothing. Now, coming into the ballgame, Stan, San Jose State was a heavy favorite. Some lines I read as much as 17 points for the Hurons to score that way on their first drive. What a big confidence boost. Oh, it has to be a great confidence boost. They've watched films of these guys going up and down the field, manhandling teams. you got to say, geez, how good are these guys? For them to get this early score tells them they can do something against this football team. Maybe they didn't think they could until that. Eastern Michigan has two kickers. You saw Hennigan earlier. This guy, John Lump, is their long kicker. Dropping back deep is James Saxon, but he won't have it. It's a short kick. It'll be taken by one of the up people. This is Donald Stewart, a backup fullback, and he's out to the 31-yard line, where the Spartans down 7-0, come on the field, led by senior quarterback Mike Perez. He has set 15 
San Jose State School records, number two in the country in total offense, number 14 in passing efficiency. He could be the top quarterback chosen in the NFL draft this spring, Stan. Well, he has all the statistics, that's for sure, and he has all the capabilities, the size, the arm, very well fit. Play action pass, Perez to throw. He has all day firing down the middle, cut for a first down. That's Guy Liggins. No, it was, what are they saying now? Was the ball taken away? Tom Menard stepped up there. It appeared to go over the middle for a completion, and they are going to say the ball remains in possession of San Jose State. Let's check this one out again. Yeah, let's see. The ball did pop out. Did it pop out before he hit the ground? Well, see, got plenty of good pass protection here. See the linebackers drawn up. Now, they don't get quite deep enough. He gets so much time. He just meant plenty of time to pick out Liggins. The ball's right there. Now, the ball looks like it was started to come out before he hit the ground, but the referee called it down. We did see the ball hit the ground before his actual body hit the ground. It's hard to tell where his knees were, though. Offensive line gave him great protection first series. Mike Bernard is the best of the people up front, certainly a pro prospect. They move Liggins in motion, and they hand off to Kenny Jackson. Big hole. Breaks it 45-40, and he's pushed out by Jerry Smith at the 30-yard line of Eastern Michigan. 25-yard pickup. So San Jose State stands showing off their first diversity. First play of the game goes 15 to the pass, then a 25-yard run. Okay. Offensive line for Eastern Michigan, four-man front. Eric Miller, the top sacker. Linebackers, Keith Bertram is their leading tackler on the ball club. Dan Bennett is a freshman quarter. Maybe a point of attack. Also, Charles Gordon back there. He's the best defensive player they have. But he missed the, the tackle on that last play to give an extra 15 yards. First and 10, Spartans trying to tie the game. They pitch to Kenny Jackson again. Short side of the field, picks up three. Kenny Jackson, a senior out of San Mateo, California. Last year, ran for over 1,100 yards this year. Only 818 because the guy in your picture right there, number 20, James Saxon, became more a factor in the Spartan attack. That's what they say. They say Kenny Jackson didn't play any less this year. He just didn't have to carry the load as much with James Saxon. In fact, last year, Jackson became only the fifth NCAA player to rush for over 1,000 yards and catch 50 passes in the same season. Yeah, and San Jose State has had two of them. Gerald Wilhite also did it. Second down play action for Perez to throw. And he throws behind James Saxon. Coverage there by outside linebacker Anthony Johnson. That'll bring up a third down and seven for Mike Perez. Well, that's the favorite play action pattern right there. Uh, Eastern Michigan has been working on defending that pattern all week long. They like to hit Liggins in the slot off the play action, clear out, and bring him right through the slot in the, down the sideline. Jim Harkham has been working on it all week long, and the, the uh, defense recognized it and stopped it that time. San Jose State now employs three wide receivers. Liggins in motion with McLeod and Kenny Roberts out there. Third and seven over the middle, wide open. It's caught by the tight end. Clump, he's inside the 10. And he's down to the nine before Charles Gordon and Tom Menard bring him down. 19-yard pickups, then. This thing breaks wide open over the middle. Well, nobody takes him. They're so uh, gone on Liggins trying to stop him. They forget the tight end. And he leads this team in yards per catch with 19.3 you got to cover everybody. Somebody made a mistake here because he's running down the field free. And Perez, as smart as he is, the way he can read, he'll pick that up right away. He likes his tight end. Clump caught 20 this year. Most in San Jose State, four years with a tight end. Here's Kenny Jackson down to about the six-yard line. You can't become over-enamored with the guy Liggins because the other guys can burn you, too. Just a power run right here by Kenny Jackson. Almost busted. Just get him by the leg and stop him at the six-yard line. Mike Burns, Keith Bertram on the tackle. These two teams obviously strong defensive outfits, but they're known for their offense. San Jose State, sixth best scoring team in the country, 35.5 of all game. And all offense so far. There's Kenny Jackson again. Touchdown! As that opened up wide through the middle. How often does a guy run in 
from the six up the middle and go in virtually untouched. That's one thing defensively is a sin. You never let the ball carrier go into the end zone standing up. If he's going to score, make him pay for it. But just a counter play. You see both linemen pulling around. Good blocks. And again, it just opens wide up. The linebackers overreacted on the first uh, step by the backs and were in great position to be blocked and cut off from the pursuit angles. Kenny Jackson was hurt in last year's California Bowl, making up for it this year. Off to a great start. Four carries, 37 yards, and a touchdown. Alvarez for the extra point. It's straight up and good. So San Jose State answers back quickly, going 70 yards in less than two and a half minutes, and they tie the ball game. 7-19 to play. First quarter, each team has a touchdown. The Movie Channel. The only national all-movie network. The Movie Channel. A different movie every single night. The Movie Channel. Blockbusters, Hollywood classics, foreign films, and offbeat flicks. The Movie Channel. Movies around the clock. The Movie Channel. Movies anytime you want to watch. The Movie Channel. The perfect VCR accessory with VCR theater every night at 3 a.m. to Central. The Movie Channel. The only place for all movies all the time. The Movie Channel. The Movie Channel. The Movie Channel. The movie channel. Fancy perfuming aftershave. It's got to be a quarterback's locker. Real guys who get mud on their uniforms use rugged, honest stuff. Ice blue aqua velva. There's something about today's aqua velva man. Look for aqua velva Christmas gift sets. The skilled twist cordless power screwdriver. It's a new twist on an old idea. Skill, precision, strength, and stamina to bring you the best. ESPN has assembled an outstanding schedule of NFL games every Sunday night. Your cable connection to the NFL is ESPN. Well, San Jose State was at its best on their opening possession. It took him only 220 to go 70 yards, and Kenny Jackson scored the touchdown. He now has 17 touchdowns this year, a school record for touchdowns. Alavarez to kick off again. 7-7. So Eastern Michigan does so well in their first possession stand, but then their defense really was... Uh, non-existent on that first series and gives it all back. Well, Jim Harkeman knew they'd get the yardage, but what he didn't want them to do is be able to strike quickly, and they did. Two minutes and 20 seconds is the worst part of that stat because that means all the work that uh, Eastern did went down the drain quickly. Alavarez kicks off again. Glenard Smith with a big return to open the ball game, and this time he's hemmed in and dropped before he makes the 20. He's put down at the 16-yard line. Well, here's much better special teams coverage for San Jose State. I'm sure their special teams coach on the sidelines said, don't get us in the hole again. They get down there quick. That's always the goal. They give special bonus points for getting the returner inside the 20. Leonard Smith just did not get the ball quickly enough to stay close enough to his wedge. The wedge got in front of him, and once they busted through it, it was easy play. David Knox made the tackle. They began their first series with Spartan 42, their second series on their own. 17. That's Gary Patton. Pulled down by Mike Hutcherson. Hutcherson, the great second half of this year, as he made honorable mention All American. Or, pardon me, honorable mention uh, All PCAA. Short gain, brings up second down. Spartan 46 defense. Outstanding rush defense. Third best in the country. They give up only about 84 a ball game yards. And that's what we talked about. You don't want second down and nine because now they get out of that wishbone. They have to go to an offense they'd rather not run. They'd rather keep the ball on the ground out of the wishbone. They're out of the wishbone now. And they hand off to the tailback. Patton again. Out across the 23, about the 24-yard line before. Greg Cox makes the tackle on Patton. Last two years, he has rushed for over 1,000 yards. This year, 1,112, third best in the MAC. The MAC had four ball carriers this year, over a thousand. That was close. That was the old sprint draw, and he got past the first wave. He just got uh, tripped up just a little bit where he couldn't make the open field move. 
on Cox. If he could have had a little bit of more footing, he might have been able to get by that one tackler. He had a lot of yards to go. Third and five. Adam's second pass of the game. Again, like the first, a dump off. And they're not going to pick up anything on this one, though. Tim Wells stepped up and made the play. A flag is thrown, though, on the snap. It looks like it's in the area where the... Uh, now, they're, now the Eastern Michigan's cheering, so it must be on San Jose State. I should have waited. Usually when the, the uh, flag is thrown behind and uh, Claude Gilbert doesn't know, wants to know what's going on, it's usually offensive holding. It's defensive holding called on San Jose State. Very rare penalty on a run play, but the Spartans uh, pick up their third penalty, all coming on defense. Holding by the defense, 10-yard penalty, first down. Well, that, uh, you know, that's not uh, something that's not done a lot. When you stunt a lot, now linemen like to grab two guys and hold them so the guy can loop around exactly. him and come free. That's probably what happened. That's why the holding call. You don't get it called very much. That's why so many people do it, especially in pro ball. Well, Claude Gilbert's almost gotten used to his defense taking a lot of penalties. Five and a half to play. First quarter, they picked up three costly penalties on defense. Adam shoots himself on the ball, and he's out across the 40 to about the 41-yard line. Bill Frash again steps up to make the tackle. Adams has a strong arm. We've not seen him throw yet, but uh, he's a very, obviously, a very strong runner. Yeah, penalties have uh, made a big part in this game already, Greg, as you've talked about. Just letting them keep the football right there on third down. When you're getting the ball back, you never want to commit a penalty that allow the other team to keep the football. Uh, especially with an explosive offense behind you. That defense got one third down. They got to get the ball. Adams, the third leading rusher on the ball club behind Patton and Foster. Here's Patton, and he has the first down to the 44-yard line, running up the middle. I think this is a good strategy by Jim Harkerman to put this wishbone in. It's been so good to him all year long inside the 20-yard line, and uh, he also had some film on San Jose State playing against the University of the Pacific. Now, Pacific didn't do that well, but uh, Jim Harkema felt his wishbone was much better as far as the personnel was concerned. And some of the things that they saw on the film, they thought they could do yes. against San Jose State today. The final score was San Jose State 42, Pacific 17. But Harkema and his coaching staff thought that uh, Pacific might execute very well on their wishbone, that some things were there for them. Here's the pitch to Patton again, running wide. And Kidney strings it out and throws him down inbounds for no gain. Well, they got what they wanted. That was just a good play by Kidney, good speed. You didn't slow him down. Uh, the wishbone is predicated on the inside fake or the first man slowing down the pursuit. That's what makes it work. On a pitch play, defensively, you know, heck, I can sprint to the sideline. I know he's got the ball. But when you're faking and you're delaying your linebackers, it's tougher to get to the outside on a play around the corner. That time, nothing stopped Barry Kidney. He made the play on pursuit. Gary Patton never been to California before this week. And it was a chilly 40 degrees in Fresno today. Hands on the keeper, breaks some tackles, has the first down, and he fights his way to the 40 of San Jose State. And also, Harkema told uh, both you and I, Stan, yesterday that if it doesn't work, at least Adams is a tough quarterback. He'll make it work. Well, Harry, look what he does. See the man right there? 49 has the quarterback on the option. All he does is follow his fullback. He uses him as a shield, as a blocker, and cuts up the field before the man with the responsibility for the quarterback on the option can take him. He's waiting for him, but he cuts up in the line before he even get out to him. That's just a good heads-up play, a good read by Ron Adams. Jay Taylor finally pulled him down, 16-yard pickup. Adams has now rushed three times for 33 yards. First and 10 from the Spartan 40. They hand off to Gary Patton, running right, gets the outside. And he's down to the 23-yard line for a 17-yard pickup before Greg Cox shoves him out of bounds. And Patton is obviously pumped up. Well, this whole Eastern Michigan team is, again, just a simple power handoff. They're just blowing out the line. Watch it. They're blowing these people back. Look at that hole he goes through. He's not even touched. And he loves to bounce to the outside. They should know that. Cornerback there, she's got to stay outside. Rasnick, you see, he's got to play. He's got to stay out there. He's coming up. He's got contained. If he lets him get outside right there, that's what Patton wants, and he took it. Fresh also helped out Cox. First and 10. They say he's out at the 25 yard line. Here's Chuck Nash, the freshman fullback for a short gain. That'll bring up a second and nine. What a sensational year for the Eastern Michigan Hurons at nine and two, their best year ever in their football history. 
Here's a good play defensively. He's, he's right there, stunt right into the play defensively. But again, you accomplish something on that play. You make them know that you can hand the ball off up the middle, which delays people on the outside plays if they really respect you as far as running inside. And Eastern Michigan, Stan, is keeping the ball away from the Spartans. This thing's going exactly according to plan. Here's the pitch to Jimmy Johnson. And he's shoved out at the 25-yard line. And Jim Harkema, the head coach of the Eastern Michigan Hurons, is going nuts on the sideline. Well, he's he mad thought at it was Bob. A face mask. No, he's mad at Bob Foster. He's screaming at him. He had exactly what he wanted. He had the pitch man with a blocker in front of him. But Bob Foster didn't make the block. If all he has to do is cut down there. Watch now. Watch the outside. You got the. There's Foster leading Jimmy Johnson around the corner. We see him miss the block right there. He had that man perfect position to make the block. He just didn't make it. Tim Wells made the play, but uh, he should have been blocked easily by Foster. Well, you're exactly right. Harkema really laid into Foster when he came off the field. Third and ten. Clock stops with 2.06 to play. First quarter, we're tied at seven. There was some confusion on defense, and they called a timeout. Adams saw that. He tried to get the snap off before they could get the timeout because he, he knew there was confusion. And the uh, clock was also winding down, so... Adams calls our first time out of the ball game with 2.05 to play first quarter. A6, hurry and you'll make it. Delta Airlines ticket agent Sam Singletary knows how to get people moving. Mr. Franklin, Mr. Franklin, you're back. But sometimes he has to show off a few moves of his own, the kind of moves that made him a first string halfback. Sam Singletary shares a feeling with everyone at Delta. He loves what he's doing, and it shows. We love to fly, it's the and it shows. you put on your feet determines how well things go down. Nordica. Reach a new high. We have played 12 minutes and 55 seconds of this football game and San Jose State has had it 2 minutes and 20 seconds. So Eastern Michigan, the wishbone is doing it to Claude Gilbert Spartans keeping it the hand, the football out of the arms of uh, Perez. But now it's a big third down and ten. They do not go to the wishbone. They bring uh, two backs in, one of the slot back, and they have two wide receivers, Ziegler and Ostrander. And move Nash in motion. Adams throws. No catch. No catch. Well, it looked good from here, I'll tell you that. There's a flag down in the field, though. A couple flags. Mark Ziegler, the intended receiver, number 83, their top receiver with 24 this year. Let's see if we can see it. Here's the ball. See if we can see it gets his arms under it or not. It's hard to see. We're being blocked out by Jim Taylor, the corner on the play. Maybe this angle we'll be able to see. Just a rollout. Well executed play against the blitz. He comes away from it. Now does he get the ball? Looks like a no, catch to me. I think it looks like a catch, Greg. I think it definitely does from that angle. The I got holding violations holding. Against the offense. I have a roughing the passer Ooh. against the defense. The penalty's offset. Repeat the down, third down. Well, once again, the San Jose State defense is their own worst enemy. Yeah, you don't see uh, too many roughing the passer penalties called number one in college and number two on a rollout yeah, with really? a rollout quarterback. It can run the football. Now well, third and ten comes again. First ball. They have picked up 80 of their 85 yards the Hurons have on the ground. Play action on the wishbone. It's broken up by Greg Cox. There was a screen pass. They just uh, tackled the screen man. He never got out there. He kept looking for him. And the, the Adams was being pressured. Just had to throw it in the general direction. Luckily, one of the linemen didn't pick it off for San Jose State. It was a middle screen. Well, the closest guy to catching the ball for the Hurons was uh, Jim Colissimo, the yeah. junior guard. So now we have a field goal attempt coming up. 42 yards 
for Tim Hennigan, who takes them all inside the 50. And he's had a great year, as you see there. He's made 9 of 10. And as long this year, 41 yards out of the hole of quarterback Adams. And it's long enough. It's right down the middle. So Eastern Michigan has scored on their first two possessions. 42-yard field goal puts them up by three with 1.51 to play in the first quarter. Just picture yourself behind the wheel of a stylish new Pontiac, a classic new Cadillac, or a sharp new Honda. But only one new car dealer in Washtenaw County can offer you all three Chapman Motors. And right now, you can do more than just picture yourself behind the wheel. Because with a large selection, big discounts, and low financing, the personable sales staff at Chapman's invite you to discover how easy it will be to drive one home. From Chapman Motors on Michigan Avenue, downtown Ypsilanti. The neighbor on the right bought the Toro CCR 2000 last year, which prompted his neighbor to the left to get one this year. He soon discovered that it was compact, easy to handle, yet had the power to clear 12 inches of heavy snow. He also discovered that while this Toro with the unique curved rotor would throw snow 30 feet to the left, it would also throw it to the right. Big savings going on now at Congdon's Ace Hardware, Pearl Street, downtown Ypsilanti. John Elway and the Broncos remain in the AFC title chase. The Seahawks want to stop them. The battle is set. Denver versus Seattle, live Sunday night, right after NFL primetime on ESPN. Well, the past three years, the California Bowl has been dominated by the PCAA. Last year, the Spartans beat Miami of Ohio 37 to 7. The year before that, Fresno State buried Bowling Green 51 to 7. The year before that, Nevada Las Vegas over Toledo, 30 to 13 stand. But early in this game, Eastern Michigan has the upper hand. They look solid. Well, they've kept the football, and that's what they want to do. And now they'll see it's the defense's turn now. They didn't do too good to let in the score in two minutes and 20 seconds. They got to pick it up. John Love will kick off again. Again, he goes very short. Donald Stewart, second return from his 15. And he's hit in the open field by Anthony Johnson, a freshman linebacker. And I tell you what, it's a good thing Anthony Johnson <laughs> made the tackle. There's a huge hole in the middle of this uh, special teams unit, but he just can't get to it. Uh, Anthony Johnson came down untouched and made the play. You can see this hole right here. He just goes right between. Geez, somebody, they're going to get yelled out there. You cannot, let people, much you cannot let people run between the wedge. That's the wedge's responsibility. You're better off having two on one guy than nobody. And the reason the Hurons are kicking short, James Saxon, the 10th best kick returner in the country. Here's Mike Perez. Flush. And for the 14th time this year, he is sacked. Mike Burns in there along with Bronco Vincing. Just good coverage this time. The linebackers stayed back. It's a good same play action out of eye. He's looking over the middle. Just can't get there. Eric Miller is the first man to put pressure on. Vincing cleans up on him. I tell you what, uh, only uh, 14 sacks now this yeah. year. Uh, but a lot of it, and I've watched some film on them, is because Mike Perez is strong. He avoids the oh, rush. Man. He's completed two passes left-handed while they're hanging on his side. Oh, that bench press is stand 350 pounds. They flare to Saxon right side. He dodges a couple of people and gets back to the line of scrimmage. But still, that'll bring up a third down and 14. They hark him as like a cheerleader on the sideline. That guy is, <laughs> he gets more excited than any of the players do. He's jumping up and down. This is a big play defensively. You got him in third and long. You drop back now, nine, ten yards. Let it catch in front of you. Go up and make the tackle. Harkema said the key to this game will be how many yards they make after they catch the ball. We're going to yeah. give them the stuff in front of us, but if we can go up and make the tackle on them, then we think we can at least slow them down. Well, Jim Harkema wouldn't be a human being if he's not jumping around inside now. What a performance by his team. Early price over the middle, throws complete to William McLeod, but he is short of the first down. Well short. Yep. Coverage there by the linebacker Keith Bertram to drop back. So the Spartans stall on their second series. And that should be maybe the last play of the quarter. We have nine seconds, eight seconds. We'll see if Deal will get it off in time. The wind is behind him. He'd like to get advantage of the wind. And you better hurry up and snap it here, too. They didn't do it. Nope. Looked like they were Mistake. intentionally rushing out there to get it off with the wind behind him. And then he didn't call 
Ike in town. First quarter, very surprisingly, Eastern Michigan leads by three after the first 15. Looking for winter excitement? Convention and Visitors Bureau and United Express invite you to Fresno. Fresno, so much, so close. Love in the 90s. It might be better than you think. I have a spot of hot ears to live in. Talking all night. I have a spot of hot ears to create. No, Mr. Wright. Very, very. Upper, upper. Like it, Rusty. Upper crusty. Have a sherry? Your palace or mine. Kent means excellence. From the Kent State Museum, where history's fashions serve as the perfect backdrop for students of the Shannon Rogers and Jerry Silverman School of Fashion Design and Merchandising, to the Graphic Design Department, regarded as one of the finest in the country, Kent has shown itself to be a trendsetter. The Blossom Festival School provides students with opportunities for study through dance, art, and musical programs, as well as the nationally acclaimed Boardhouse Theater. The list goes on and on. Kent, academic excellence. The two key stats to look at there, Eastern Michigan's rushing total, 80. Time of possession, staggering. Eastern Michigan, 1141 to 419. That's one way to slow down Perez. Don't give him the football. Tom Beal into punt. The best way. That's the best way. <laughs> good defense starts with good offense, right? Beal had a bad year this year. Gets the kick away. Charles Gordon, number one. Let's it bounce, then backs away. And Eastern Michigan's third possession will begin at about their 36-yard line, following a 35-yard punt from Deal. Last year, he averaged almost 41 a kick. Second team all PCAA this year. He had the worst average in the conference at 38.5. You know, Greg, uh, San Jose State's ranked third in the country against the run. But I think that's a, a deceptive statistic because when ahead. you're 10 and 1, obviously yeah. you've been ahead most of the time in the third and fourth quarters. And the other team's got to throw the football. they got to go to the air. So obviously your stats on the ground are going to be favorable. And a couple of teams ran well. UNLV, almost 200 yards rushing, and Stanford with Brad Muster, 185 yards. First and 10 for the Eastern Michigan Hurons at their 36. There's Gary Patton, and he picks up good yardage out to the 43-yard line before again Greg Cox, a senior, rover back from Columbus, Ohio, puts him down. Another key, they're missing their middle guard. They're all PCAA first-team middle guard Larry Sandston. He's uh, missed the last two games with a foot injury and is not ready for the California Bowl. Stephen Guthrie, or Stephen Guthrie, is in there in his place. And, you know, that's obviously a very key position to stop the run. Here's Jimmy Johnson. And making the tackle there is Richard Johnson, reserve left tackle behind Hutcherson. He's a junior from San Jose. That'll bring up a third down for Eastern Michigan. Big play defensively, held them to no gain. They got to get a few of those plays. They can't keep giving them positive yardage every play. If you give them three, four yards, they'll keep on doing what they've been doing. That's just keep the football away from you. Defensively, they may be gambling right here just to try to get that football. Eastern Michigan has picked up one of their first two third down conversions on their own. They've also been aided by penalty. He's going to pitch. Patton pulls it down, has the corner, and he has the first down. I don't and know. the 47 is going to be close. I believe he had it. Let's see where they spot it. And where he spots it, they do have it. Watch this block on the sideline here.
Jimmy Johnson, watch the block that he makes. If we can see it here, he just spins the guy up in the air. There it is. He lands on his face. <laughs> He's talking about face blocks. That's one where the defender gets his face in the grass. That's what he wanted before. That's why he was yelling at Bob Foster, which is probably why Jimmy Johnson's in there leading that play this time. Jimmy Johnson is the uh, brother of Anthony Johnson. The outside linebacker. He's also played fullback quite a bit this year, which means he's worked on his yeah. blocking. Well, he's only two on one. He's a junior. He's behind Adams with Patton, and the up man of the bone is Nash. They throw it to Johnson on the pitch. Great block there by Patton yep. to spill Cox. And they pick up good yardage again on first down. And that is a good block by Patton. He put his man on the ground. They're blocking well for each other. That's a tough play defensively. You're out in the open field with a man. He's got everything on you. He just flips him right up in the air, makes the block, and gives Jimmy Johnson four or five yards on the play. Johnson now three carries, 24 yards. And we have not seen Bob Foster come back into the game since Harkema rather loudly pulled him off the field for missing a block. Well, one thing about the wishbone, you get to carry the ball, but you better block when the other guy's carrying it. Second and six. One of the interior people for Eastern Michigan jumped off sides. I believe it was Evan Hicks, and he's hard to miss at 325, number 71. He had everybody jumping. He went with a long count. Sometimes you fool your own people, see? He went with a long count. You see the hard count? You could see his shoulder and his head move. And sometimes if you can, you can actually draw off your own men at times. I think that's what he did to Evan Hicks. And also, Mark Ziegler, the wide receiver, even went off sides. Evan Six reported to camp this year at 337 pounds. He got down to 325 where he's playing <laughs> at now. Good blocker, though. Second team All-Mac. And he is an outstanding run blocker, the best uh, run blocker they have on the, on the uh, team, on the line. Well, all he's got to do is get in the way. It's a long time to go around him. Second down at 11 now. Second penalty against Eastern Michigan. Adams on the keeper. He's hit hard by Cox. That'll bring up a third down and eight. Greg Cox. He calls himself the body rocker. Greg C. Status. He is an intense player, certainly uh, high on his ability. Now well, watch this hit right there. If you can make hits like that, you can be the whatever. You pick any name you want if you can make hits like that. Greg Cox, a big, strong safety or a small linebacker, sort of in between six foot two sixteen. Yeah. But he's also listed as a backup linebacker. So he's a guy that can go uh, in the secondary or the linebacker position. Body rocker, Greg C. Status. The status means that someday he will amount to something big. He already has. Maybe the NFL. There's a third down play. Adams He's not going to pick it up. I tell you what, they were very lucky there. If they don't make that tackle, they're blitzing and playing man-to-man -man defense. All the rest of the players were downfield covering people. This is where Adams is dangerous. If he busts through here, if he can break through, if Patton would have just turned around and blocked somebody, he may have been able to break through there, and everybody else was run off with their men in coverage. Yepi Pau, Tim Wells, Richard Johnson all combined on the tackle. First time of the ballgame, we'll see Ron Bonitis out of Hamilton, Canada. They have uh, four players on Eastern Michigan Club from Canada, three from Hamilton. He's having a good year, about 38 yards a kick. This one goes nowhere. He flubbed it. It'll mount to the 25. They back away. Takes they a roll. They'll hit one of the Spartans, apparently. Free ball. And the Hurons have it. What a break there for the Hurons. It glanced off the field and just grazed one of the San Jose State back people. They usually have a call. They usually have a call telling them to stay away from the football. Watch the bounce right. Hits the blocker right there on the leg, on the side of the leg. And Eastern Mission came down and made the recovery, got the football. They're down to 12-yard line. Another big break for Eastern Michigan. That man back has to yell and warn those blockers because they can't be looking up for the football. He's got to make a call. Fire or something like that. A lot of teams use. It means just stay away from the football. Look up. Get off the field. Jim Colissimo right there recovered the fumble. It appeared to just touch Ryan Rasnick's leg. Everything's going. Eastern Michigan's way early. They're up 10-7. 10.55 to play. They run wide. With Patton trying to turn the corner. And he cuts back. And he's nailed a face mask penalty, though, on, I believe, Chris Alexander. As Patton was starting to go the other way, and Alexander just grabbed his face mask. 
Well, this is what Patton likes to do, and they play this well defensively. If you watched any film on this guy at all, and I'm sure obviously their defense has, he loves to go inside like that, draw you in, and bounce outside. Now, Barry Kidney stayed outside. He had Contain forced him back, but right there, face mask Chris Alexander and trying to make the tackle got in by the face mask really I think it's going to end up almost back to the same spot that it was uh, and whether they call it five or 15 yards may have a difference whether it's incidental or it's flagrant Eugene works right now in conference with his officials again from the WAC conference and we'll see what Mr. Wirtz has diagnosed we have a clipping clip against the defense half the distance from the previous spot first down what? <laughs> well that was we saw very obviously the face mask we didn't see any clip and uh, you don't see that very often on defense Stan. yeah <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard a clipping called against Steve we've had holding on the defense clipping on the, maybe these guys are confused Jeez. I don't know and figure out which teams on offense and defense out here I, I tell you what there was obviously a face mask so I don't know how they could not call that Yeah, <laughs> you're allowed to do that defensively. You can push an offensive man out of the way. You're allowed to push him in the back to get him out of your way. He's trying to block you. You pick up a thousand yards in penalties during the year. You pick up a few nobody's ever heard of. Defensive <laughs> clipping. First and goal for the Hurons at the six. There's Patton. And he's inside the five. Well, they say that Mike Perez is so strong that he got called for roughing the rusher yes. one time. <laughs> Last year he did it. So if they can call that, I guess they can call clipping on the defense. I've never heard it, never seen it called in my life, and uh, you know, I've been in the game over 20 years. Now Perez last year hit uh, Mark Ledbetter of Washington State. He's 6'3", 251. But Perez is strong. I spoke about it before. A guy benches 350, his own weight, 210, 18 times. But he has not been a factor in the ball game because Harkham and the Hurons with the wishbone of kept the football for themselves. There's a pitch to Jimmy Jackson. He breaks the tackle and the flag goes down. And he goes down to about the three yard line. That was on the outside men. I think the uh, cornerback and the split man. We'll see if whether it was holding on one or the other out there. Is this just the power pitch this time it's a pitch instead of a handoff but it's basically the same play off tackle with the two backs leading. They're calling it on Eastern Michigan. It is offensive holding against the Hurons. That'll drop them back, of course, 10 yards. But what a year. We spoke about it before for Eastern Michigan at 9-2 and 7-1 and and in the MAC. They won it, predicted to finish third this year in their conference. Holding, offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. And uh, Stan, they never had a uh, year better than four wins in the MAC. And this year they go 7-1, and one, and they won most of them on the road. Well, not only that, this is a program that uh, lost 27 in a row in the early 80s and was uh, they almost they almost kicked them out of the Mac. Yeah. And then another in 84. And now just three, four years later, they're in the Cal Bowl representatives of the of the championship of the MAC. So so this, I mean, John, Jim Harkin has done a great job since coming from Grand Valley State. When he took over the previous five years, they had lost 42 of 46. Here's a pass. Yeah. Patton's going to the quarterback. Adams, he's got it and he is in or no? He's out at the one yard line. What a sensational play and a very difficult pass made by Patton across the field. The Spartans were not entirely fooled on the play. Adams got rung pretty hard. Well, he's tried that pass earlier. He tried on a two point conversion. It was stopped, but he's thrown a couple passes earlier this year. One on a two point conversion and a touchdown last in the 86. He's real close to being in, but you got to see where the football is. Again, they wore one way. In college, this is a legal play. In pro football, it wouldn't be. See right here, where's the football? That's the key. His foot looked like it was on the line, but the ball was just short of the end zone. We have a timeout called as Adams has been roughed up. 9.27 to play. First half, Eastern Michigan, 10, and San Jose State, 7.
Yeah, I got your proposal. When you have a phone that remembers 20 numbers and redials with one touch and answers calls for you and a whole lot more, you can get plenty of office work done at home or run your business from wherever you choose to live. Great. Okay, we got a deal. Bye-bye. G. No. GTE. Today's California Bowl is being brought to you by the makers of the CFA VCR College Bowl Game. And today here in Fresno, we begin the bowl season with the California Bowl. And we have a new quarterback in. Tom Sullivan is in for this snap only. Adams, of course, left the game. The officials call the timeout of his injury are forced to sit out for one play. But it's a big play. They have to get the snap. Third and one. Third and inches. Third and goal. Here's Jimmy Johnson diving. No, he lost a couple. As that Spartan defense really got in there. Barry Kidney made a nice surge. I think he's going to go for it on fourth down. I see Harkeman over there with Ron Adams. You can see Jimmy Johnson trying to go over the top, but uh, they were just surged backwards. The line, the line, offensive line yeah. has got to get some surge on the defense. Watch me. They just got into the backfield, got great penetration. It's Stephen Guthrie. We talked about the replacement middle guard. He really got his legs. Yes. And when he got his legs, that meant that he had no momentum, no force to get into the end zone. And David Knox hit him high. The junior back here from Stockton. The Hurons have called a timeout here with 9.03 to play in the first half. This obviously being a, a big decision. Leading 10 to 7. It appears they are going to be going for it. And Harkema wants to make sure they call the right play. Well, they are outside the one now. They were the length of the football inside the one on the previous down. Now they're about that same length outside the one yard line. But uh, heck, it's worth the gamble. I mean, they're in a situation, big underdogs. They have to take gambles to win anyhow. He took a gamble putting in the wishbone offense for this single game. I talked about it with you last night uh, when we went to the Rose Bowl to play Jim Plunkett, who, like Mike Perez, was the leading passer in the country, Heisman Trophy winner. Woody Hayes put in the wishbone offense to try to keep the ball away from Plunkett. We had some great runners, John yeah. Brockington and Leo Hayden, both first-round sure. picks in the NFL. Rex Kern was the quarterback. Well, we went out there <laughs> and unfortunately lost to Plunkett, but it wasn't because of the wishbone. It was because our defense couldn't stop Plunkett. And the fun part about that, Stan was telling that story to me and uh, Jim Harkema. Harkema was loving the story until you got to the last part, and you said, and we lost the game. And he walked away. <laughs> I don't want to hear any part of this thing. Ron Adams returns at quarterback. Harkema, what a great man he is. Fifth year, the head coach here at Eastern Michigan. First year, they went one in ten. Second year, two, seven, and two. Third year, four and seven. Last year, six and five. Their first winning year since 77. And of course, this year, a sensational year, nine and two. And if they win today, it's all gravy, really. But they're playing a great ball game up 10 7. Now, big fourth and one. They hand off to Foster, and he's in the end zone. Foster was taken off the field for not blocking. He's brought back in, and he scores. Well, he is the toughest inside runner. We said that in pregame. He's tougher inside the patent, and that's why he's in there. Really, just a huge hole opened up, and he just walked into the end zone. That right there reminds me of when Alan Amici scored in the greatest game yeah. ever played. It was that big a hole. He just sort of walks into the end zone and is not hit till he crosses the goal line. That's two touchdowns for Foster. Both coming on his last two runs. Now Hennigan for the extra point. And he nailed that baby right down the middle. The flag is down, though, late. Hennigan was creamed. And so was Adams. Adams, actually, the uh, holder was really rocked. That's going to be, you would assume, a penalty on the kick. He may also get somebody thrown out of the game because that uh, smacks of being intentional. Yes, roughing the kicker, they are saying, or the holder, whoever got hit. Right. And that will be assessed on the kickoff when we come back to Fresno, California. We have nine minutes to play in the first half. The Hurons, who were 17-point underdogs, lead by 10. Bowling Green State University provides quality instruction for 17,000 students. But first-rate education isn't worth much if you cannot afford it which is why Bowling Green strives to hold down the cost of going away to school. Programs are also available to help students obtain loans, part-time employment, 
and other forms of financial aid to make the expense of higher education as manageable as possible. Become part of an affordable environment for excellence, Bowling Green State University. All season long, live life on the edge with World Cup skiing on the ESPN. The Winter Olympics are just around the corner, and that means hair-raising excitement on the slopes as everyone tunes up for the big event. Breakneck speed and all-out effort could spell triumph or disaster. See top women skiers reach high speeds as they compete in the World Cup Women's Downhill from Lukerbad, Switzerland. Sunday afternoon at 2 Eastern on the ESPN. Well, Eastern Michigan scored the first two times they had the football. Their third drive, they were stalled out. They went to punt, and San Jose State had the ball hit them inadvertently. I believe Rasnick, and they recovered right down point blank, point blank range, and the Hurons cash in and now lead 17-7. So even when they make mistakes, uh, Stan, things are going right today for Eastern Michigan. Yeah, the, but Knight has shanked the punt, left-footed punter. He shanked it off the side. And uh, the short punt uh, just hit and bounced directly left and end up hitting Rasnick, who was blocking a man. And his uh, deep man didn't tell him to get out of the way. you got to have communication on those bad kicks because it almost happened earlier uh, the other way around. John Lopp to kick off to Blackshear and Saxon in theory, but he has not yet done that. He has kicked it short, but this time will kick off from midfield. He'll probably he'll actually blasted it, and Stewart again picks it up. And to the 28-yard line, he goes. I thought uh, Lauf would just nail it, being only at the 50 and being a long kicking specialist. He probably could put it out of the end zone, but he decided not to do that. Well, not only that, Greg, he kicked it straight ahead and hit yeah. the man 10 yards away. And luckily for, for San Jose, the ball went where they could recover the football. But that, that's not a bad play. No, they're really going it, for it. You know, you still got him inside the 30. You got a chance to get the football. A lot of teams automatically onside kick after a 15-yard penalty. Don Shell English made the tackle on Donald Stewart. Perez to throw on first down. As time throws for Kenny Jackson. Anthony Johnson misses the tackle. But he has help, and he don't get much yardage after he catches the ball. Again, only a gain of about three on the play. That's the key, making the man go down without getting a whole lot of yards after the catch. Linebackers are back. He misses one man, but here's the rest of them coming along. That's good pursuit defensively. Tom Menard, the yes. free safety, finally got up there to make the tackle. And also Scott Weika, number 98, a linebacker. Perez, five or six, five, four, six, 40 yards passing. 40 yards passing at this stage of the game is nothing to him. Here's the handoff to Saxon. He hurdles the 35, and he's pulled down there on a good tackle by Eric Miller. And his second team, all Mac. Last year, this year, honorable mention because he was suspended for the first four games this year, tripping up James Saxon. That's twice they've lined up Guy Liggins in the fullback's position out of the eye and then put him in motion and ran the sprint, the sprint draw play off that formation. So maybe we'll see a sprint draw pass and try to get Liggins down the sideline next time. Do that. that was the first time Saxon touched the football in his first carry of the game. There's a third and three. It is caught for a first down by Kenny Roberts. Or pardon me, Willie McLeod is the man who makes the tackle. Senior, a teammate of Guy Liggins in uh, junior college play. Well, they wanted to stop uh, Guy Liggins, which is the right play. Just a good throw by Perez. He just gets it over the linebacker's head in between two of them. But still, I think that was the play you had to make defensively. You had to take away the short man for the sure first down gamble that he couldn't complete the ball in between your three or four defenders. And Perez was just up to the pass at that time. Brian Carter was there, stand to watch. McLeod slipped down over the middle. It is not come. Dropped over the middle as they were going for Guy Liggins, Charles Gordon, along with Jerry Smith on the pass protection, the defense. 
But that ball was there for Liggins. Ball was a bit underthrown yeah, by Mike was. Perez. Yeah, it was not uh, his best throw. I think Liggins was wide open on the seam pattern. He just lined up in the slot, went straight down the field. Nobody touched him, and he was able to split both the corner and the free safety. Perez just didn't get him the football. Second down of 10. Jackson alone step back behind Perez. He throws. This one is complete to Kenny Roberts. Charles Gordon there on the coverage, but Roberts has enough for the first down. Well, Perez again smart. They went to some lock on, some coverage, man to man coverage. He's able to pick the man out that's single covered right here. See, Kenny Roberts just goes down and hooks, so he's on Charles Gordon, but he had single coverage. Perez is, uh, that's one thing they say about him. He's really a smart quarterback as well as having the good arm. Comes it off to Kenny Jackson. Nice open field tackle there. Jim Hefner along with Scott Weicker. Jim Harkham has said what they want to do defensively. Now they'll change up and go man every once in a while just to change the reads for Perez because you can't give him a steady diet, an absolute diet of the same thing. But they want to play a lot of zone, let him catch the ball in front. And if they do score, make them take a lot of time to get their points on the board. Jackson, the lone setback. He throws up field and he underthrows William McLeod as the ball skipped. It may have been a hit at the line of scrimmage. I don't know if it was Jim Hefner or somebody. I think tipped the ball at the line, made the ball go straight down. But that was called the read screen there. You send a guy out in the flat and you send McLeod for the curl and you read the linebacker. So they drop back with the curl, you throw it to the screen man. They come up on the screen, which he did that time, and Perez read it correctly. You throw downfield to McLeod. Unfortunately for him, somebody tipped him. Eastern Michigan is doing very well offensively. Maybe not a, a strong surprise, but their defense is really playing San Jose State pretty tough here, which is a major surprise. They're down. Perez throws to Saxon. Three people around. He drops the football. That's great defense by the Hurons. Jim Hefner, Scott Weikas surround him with another player also over there. They're really playing a strong defensive football game. Well, they had a little change up there. Watch Hefner. He doesn't even, he's a defensive lineman, but he's playing a spy. Watch him drop off here. See him in the middle? He's looking for somebody underneath. And you're right, three men right there. They know on third down, and they're going to try to just dump the ball and run for the first down. A good defensive philosophy by Eastern Michigan. San Jose State's going forward here on fourth down because of the field position. 38-yard line. It would take a good punt to get him inside the, the 10 or so. Why not go? Perez throws up field. Caught by Liggins. First down inside the 20, 19-yard line. Tom Menard there on the coverage, but it was late as Guy Liggins in a crossing pattern makes the play and spins it upfield and picks up the first. There's one guy you're going to pick out in fourth down to cover. Who's it going to be? It's going to be this guy right here. Menard had him, but he got faked out. He's looking for the outside cut. But I wouldn't put one man on him on fourth down and eight, that's for sure. I, if I was in a double team and they were playing man there, anybody, it would be that slot back, Guy Liggins. Guy Liggins has set virtually every receiving record possible in Spartan history. Hurons are pointing at Mike Bernard saying he jumped off sides. And he did. He rocked forward. He can't do that. See if the officials saw it, Stan. Well, I'm sure they did. But if they didn't, uh, there's something wrong. Dead ball, ball yep. start, offense. They saw it. Still first down. See him right here. See him go forward. You can't do that. First of all, you can't have two men in motion at the same time. But then, of course, that is not in play until the ball is snapped. But uh, right there, once you get in that three-point stance uh, as an offensive lineman, you cannot move. Mike Bernard, the man who did it, has started every game since the second game of 85. He had a string of 2,230 consecutive snaps broken this year. He's like the Cal Ripken Jr. of uh, <laughs> college football. Liggins in motion. Hand off to, no, play action. That's Liggins. Perez throws for Liggins behind Liggins. That's one of their favorite plays. They call it the trap pass. Just another way of running the same pattern. They clear out with a wide receiver. They bring Liggins down into the vacated area, downfield about 15 yards near the sideline. On that play, Perez rolls out and tries to hit him, but he threw it behind him. Guy Liggins last year caught 80 passes, sixth best in the nation. This year he caught 77, second best, but he had 1,208 yards receiving the most in college football. Perez and Liggins were roommates this week in the Cal Bowl, and uh, Liggins has come a long way. Used to be a non-practice player, a lazy player in the opinion of uh, Claude Gilbert, but he's become a great talent 
The flare out to Kenny Roberts. Dick's one man. He may go. Up that sideline. He's not in. He stepped out of bounds, but he's inside the five-yard line. A good play. They send Ligans in motion one way, try to get the defense to overreact that way. Fake to hold the linebackers, then hit Kenny Roberts right there. But two missed tackles, really, they were there to make the play. And two guys stayed, went outside. Now, that was the Steps problem. right there. Yeah, that was the problem of the inside guy. He knows Charles Gordon's out there. He's got to play him inside out. Anthony Johnson, the linebacker, has got to play inside out because he knows the corners out there supporting him. When he got outside, he had two men out and nobody coming from the inside. Kenny Roberts goes 22 yards on the catch and run. Now they hand off to Kenny Jackson. And he's down to the two-yard line before Eric Miller makes that tackle. Again, though, the key play in this drive, that was one of them, but at fourth down and seven when Liggins, uh, they tried to single cover Liggins with the free safety Tom Menard, and uh, that's not going to work very often. Mike Perez, one of seven finalists for the Davy O'Brien Award, which will go to the nation's top quarterback. February the 15th, it'll be announced. He is generally thought along with uh, Kerwin Bell from Florida, Todd Santos of San Diego State, and Chris Chandler of Washington. One of those four guys will go number one of the NFL draft. They get moves in motion. They pitch to Kenny Jackson. He gets nothing. He is hit head on by an aggra aggressive swarming here on defense. Jim Hefner, I tell you what, this is where he makes big plays down here. The guy's only 5'9 and 228. He plays defensive line, but watch, he can hit people. He can hit people. There he is, there's Hefner 77. got the leg, and then the man behind him, Scott Weika, hits him up top. But it was the guy who got his legs out from under him that allowed Weika to clean up. Weika's a sophomore from Dearborn, Michigan. Hefner, the most valuable defensive player voted by his teammates. Here's a big couple of plays coming up. Third and goal. 408 to play in the hand. And he didn't make it. Kenny Jackson lowered his head and was popped again by that Huron defense. That was the power eye, and they had a guard in the backfield. Mark Frederick, number 64, lined up as the other halfback, and they went right towards him. He makes a good block. He kicks out right there, but Kenny Jackson gets just swamped when he goes back to the inside. That time it was Scott Jurek, yeah. number 39, a reserve linebacker who had to play a lot, but watch this hit. That's pitcher perfect right between the numbers. That's the only way you can stop somebody at the goal line is to hit them between the numbers and stop all their forward progress. That's a huge hit by Jurek, a junior out of Plymouth, Michigan, who earlier this year started five ball games. And now we are into uh, four down territory again. At least San Jose State is deliberating whether they want to go for an Elevaris field goal or go for it on fourth. And they're going for it on fourth down. Eastern Michigan scored on fourth down for their last touchdown. Now we can see if uh, San Jose can match it. Two wide receivers, Stewart and Jackson. They pitch to Jackson. He turns the corner, and he is not in. He is shoved out of bounds at the one-yard line. And the guy who stopped it was Bronco Vincic. He did not make the tackle, but he got a hold of his jersey and slowed him down for the rest of the, the pursuit to catch up. Watch Vincic on the outside. A good play of the option right there. Just got the arm, got the jersey, slowed him down. And, uh, and Scott Jurek and the rest of the inside men forced him out of bounds, and that's a giant play. San Jose State had a first and goal from the four. They don't go in. Three, 32 to play. First half the Huron still up by 10. At Miami University, tradition has a special definition. Here is where William Holmes McGuffey first wrote the readers that would educate America. Here is the cradle of our nation's coaching greats, the mother of fraternities, birthplace of the artist-in-residence concept, site of the first college newspaper. At Miami, we hold dear to our heritage, for tradition defines another quality of our university. It's hard to believe that this was a desert less than 30 years ago. Hello, I'm Bob Maxson, and now we're on our way to becoming one of the best urban universities in the country, and that's our goal. We're dedicated to serving the educational needs of the citizens of Nevada and the great Southwest. We have an unwavering commitment to academic excellence for the sake of these young people and future generations of Nevadans. We live in a dynamic city of over half a million people who are helping us build. 
Last time Eastern Michigan played at the bowl game was 1971, the Pioneer Bowl, which is no longer obviously in existence. <laughs> it was based in Wichita Falls, Texas. They lost to Louisiana Tech 14-3. And that was a Division II appearance. It's been a long time, but they've made up for it with a tremendously strong first half showing leading the heavily favored San Jose State Spartans by 10. We're up against it to begin this series. Adam goes headlong yard line just trying to give his team some breathing room here what a great defensive sequence again on that last uh, sequence as the Spartans could not get in well this is just a quarter sneak to give themselves a little bit room to operate come out with three and a half minutes left to get the football back yeah. in time for Perez they're not content going in down by 10, obviously. Of a downtown investigation. We were being called to investigate new car places. When we arrived, we spoke with the owner, Jack Webb. He invited us to look around. We said we would. We began taking notes, starting with the sharp new Beretta. Next, we checked out a tough-built Chevy truck and a stylish van conversion. After conducting a thorough investigation, we've reported. For great selection and low prices, it's a crime to go anywhere other than Jack Webb Chevrolet in Ypsilanti. Mr. Pizza presents one person's perception of the perfect pizza. Start with plenty of rich sauce, sprinkle on mounds of fresh cheese, some well-placed pepperonis, a generous portion of mushrooms, add a little green pepper for color, pop it into the oven for just the right amount of time, Package it up, deliver it free, and give me a special deal. Like two medium pizzas, cheese, and three items for only $9.99. Just call Mr. Pizza at 485-0010 and ask for the double deal special. Supremacy in the NFC is at stake. The Bears and the 49ers from the city by the bay this week on Zenith Monday Night Matchup. Alongside Stan White, Greg Papa, back at Bulldog Stadium, the home of the Fresno State Bulldogs of the PCAA. Well, they're getting single coverage on the outside man right here, Greg. I wouldn't be surprised to see a little gamble here by Harkin. Well, Adams has thrown once. On balance line to the right. Whoa. They blitz, and Adams is knocked down at the goal line. They came strong that time with Greg Cox. The rover back really went at him, and he was very close to getting him in the end zone. Well, they went unbalanced right. We're going back left, but you talk about perfect timing. Cox got through the gap, and there was nobody there to pick him up. They're back at the one-yard line. The body rocker rocks <laughs> Adams. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, that was all in the timing there. He went right as the ball was being snapped. They went unbalanced right and tried to go back to the short side. Like another timeout yeah. by San Jose State. They want the football back. It's going to be a third and ten right now with 3-11 to play. A first half really impressively played by Eastern Michigan as Claude Gilbert talks to his defensive captain, senior Barry Kidney. And the Spartans are going to lose a lot of their top people. 31 of their seniors graduate uh, this year. He'll lose nine offensive people and six defensive people. Claude Gilbert will also, uh, Eastern Michigan, a very senior-oriented team. Well, that's usually the winning teams yeah. are because you win with experience, you win with players that's been a, that have been around you for a while. But tell you right here, this is a big play. They would like to keep the football away. And big plays have been the, the story of this football game. You go back fourth and one, both of them had on the one-yard line. Eastern Michigan scores. San Jose State doesn't. You know, that's a 14-point swing right there. And the score is 17-7. to seven. So those are the huge plays in the first half. Last time you wanted them to pass. Now what do you think? I, I'd say go up again. It's still unbalanced to the right. Yeah, but they're coming heavy with a blitz. The handoff to Foster. And he just does get out of the end zone. That's why you should pass. <laughs> well, they come with the blitz on uh, third and ten very heavily again. It just, uh, you know, when you're blitzing down there, tell you what, you get a lot of penetration. You can see him get through there. You're going to hit him in the end zone. He just barely bulls his way this time out of the end zone rather than into the end zone. Let me take it back. That was not Bob Foster. It was Gary Patton, number sure 34. Was. As Cox again was blowing in there along with Epi. That was cool. Uh, his knee was down in the end zone before he got the ball out. Lucky they didn't call the safety. Benitez will punt, and Wells drops deep. They have nine men in the line. They'll go for a return here, obviously, though. Benitez gets it away.
away. Scott Wells from the 38. 30. And he's down at the 26-yard line. Good open field tackle there made by Tom Kiefer. So San Jose State with 2.18 to play will begin with glorious field position. Totally new Buick Regal. There's nothing like it on the American road. Out on the horizon, the heart of a Buick, the start of a Regal new day. The great American love was made for Regal. It's a Regal reward. It's the way it should be in this Regal American land. The great American love belongs to Buick. The mighty San Jose State offense takes over at the 25-yard line. Number one passing team of the country, number five overall total yardage, number six scoring. They've been held to one touchdown. They're down 10. Perez to throw. He goes to James Saxon. Great block. And he's out inside the 10-yard line. A sensational block by the tight end. Bill Klump sprung him for about 10 more. 16-yard pickup. Well, Eastern Michigan came with a blitz, and nobody took Saxon out of the backfield. You can see the linebackers come. Jurek loses him. He has him, but he doesn't take him. You can see he's out here covering the tight end, Menard. He just gets knocked down right there, yeah, and we, Saxon just goes around him. I give Klum credit for a great block. It was a slip. They That's right. went down. He didn't do anything, but it worked. Make inside hand off Perez rolls right. He has Saxon. He waited, and now he's in trouble, but he stays up. Flag down. Now he fires, caught. That is James Sachs at the four-yard line. They grabbed Perez's face mask. <laughs> and Mike Burns got up celebrating, thought he had sacked him right here. Watch there. Right there's the face mask. He spins it, that is. Now watch him get up thinking he sacked him. <laughs> Perez is still running around. Talk about being strong. He finally gets the ball down to Saxon inside the five. Well, with the new in the grasp rule, I'm yeah, right. surprised they didn't call that. Well, that's just in pro ball, luckily yeah, I know, for Mike Perez. And really, Burns didn't just grab his face mask. He almost ripped Perez's head off. That's a tack on penalty. Against the defense, still first down, half the distance. What do we mean by that? The play went to the four. They take it half the distance from the four and give the Spartans a first and goal from the two. But they were down here last series. Ran Kenny Jackson four straight times, and four straight times, he didn't get anything. 158 to play in the first half. Perez going to throw this time, and it's almost pulled down by Guy Liggins. Perez overthrew him. Ball, I believe, was also tipped. <laughs> and again, they're talking to each other. Nobody picked up Liggins. He's wide open. Nobody took him. Well, watch him out here all free in the end zone. The ball just thrown a little high. He tried to loft it over the defender. Almost a great one-handed catch, but the ball's incomplete. And you have to say, hey, we didn't make it four times running. Now we might as well try a pass on first down. But uh, I tell you what, I'd expect him to come back and just try to ram the ball into the end zone. James Saxon brings the play in. Mike Perez only 130 yards passing. They have with 338 a game. Liggins in motion. There's Kenny Jackson dodging, and he's down close, but not in. Tell you what, that's a strange call down there, a delayed draw play, because you know they're blitzing. They know you're going to get penetration. He's lucky to get the, back to the line of scrimmage that he did. 
he may even got a little yardage out of it, but this is the type that can really be thrown for a loss. You see everybody coming. Ball's a deep handoff. He's lucky to get back, and he did get a yard out of it, but that's a strange play. Last five times, Jackson has carried inside the five. He's picked up two yards. They have two receivers and two backs. Stewart and Jack or Saxon. Saxon to pass wide open. Touchdown, Bill Clump, the tight end. James Saxon was a quarterback in high school, and he has now completed five passes as a halfback on the option. All five for touchdowns. You're right. Two this year, now three, two last year. So he's got five touchdowns. That's a real easy one there. But I tell you what, it tells you one thing. San Jose State doesn't think they could score on the ground. They had to go to trick plays to score. Lefty quarterback pulls him. Each team has now completed it. A halfback pass. Alvarez for the extra point. He's got it with 120 to play. It is now 17-14 for Eastern Michigan as we'll take one more look at the touchdown pass from Saxon to Bill Clump. Well, Clump just hits and blocks and then falls off late and is wide open in the end zone. That's just a, that's an easy play to, to execute down there because everybody's coming after the, uh, the running back on a running situation. Well, Eastern Michigan had to think something was up. Saxon is not lined up in the tail of the eye the entire ball game. They've run Jackson out of the tail exclusively, Stan. The one time they do, they obviously had something up their sleeves. Well, the other thing, though, you got to remember, Saxon's played tailback quite a bit Certainly. this year, but uh, Kenny Jackson is more of a power runner than Saxon is, and if you think they're going to give it to somebody down there, and which they have, I mean, five straight times, they give it to Kenny Jackson. Maybe that's what they were feeling. Heck, we already stopped this guy. Maybe they're putting somebody else in to give him a shot. Claude Gilbert, last two years, PCAA Coach of the Year. Last year's team won 10, lost two. And this year, they've won 10 and lost one. They came on with an eight-game winning streak. The one week uh, they lost this week, uh, year was week three at Oregon State by two. If they don't lose that ball game, they come in with a 20-game win streak. They've won 19 of their last 20. And uh, Claude Gilbert's been outspokenly upset with the fact his team has not been ranked in the top 20 by either wire service all year. Right now, they're number 20 by the Sporting News. He thinks if they would have won that Oregon State game stand, they'd be number 15 in the country right now, or thereabouts. Alvarez to kick off. It is taken near sideline. That's Bernard Smith. Or no, it's not. That's uh, Strike Sanis out across the uh, 30 flag down and now we have some late hitting yeah a little uh, tempers are starting to flare you know Stoitziadis uh, is a pretty good runner he stole a ball from a ball carry against the U and returned uh, what they call a fumble then because he picked the guy's pocket for 83 yards so once he gets the football he knows what to do with it Got a face mask on San Jose State so that's going to, we'll see whether it's a five yard. A five yard face mask yes. Thank against you. the kicking team. First down. <laughs> they just hit Gary Patton in the face. See another face mask. That's, uh, we've had quite a few face masks today. Quite a few of those penalties. Now, what does Eastern Michigan do? Are they satisfied with 115 to go in with a three point lead? You see, at least three of those are face mask penalties, too. Five on San Jose State, four on Eastern Michigan. I don't know what I do if I'm Harkin in this situation. His team's obviously played a strong half. They do not go to the wishbone and they employ two wide receivers. So we'll see what he does. Nash and Patton behind Adams. 115 to play. They're gonna run on a delay draw to Patton. And he has a big hole. He's out of bounds at the 45 yard line. Now they can throw the ball. Now they're in great position. Now they will throw the ball. You can see this is just the draw play. The sprint draw play. Good call. They catch him in the blitz, and the linebacker just runs right by the the back coming out of the backfield. Gary Patton. You got to when you're blitzing, you got to keep your eyes open. You got to see what's happening in front of you. The linebacker just went too quick on that one, trying to make the big sack. He ended up opening the floodgates for yeah. Gary Patton. That play right there dictates what they do. If they don't get anything on the play, they probably lay down and go to the half up by three. They got reverse. something. Now a reverse to Benzinger. And the Spartans have it hemmed in, but he finds a crack, and he stepped out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds. The 41-yard line, Benzinger did it, as the Spartans forced it near the sideline and gave him no room. 
That's Dan Benzinger, a freshman receiver on the reverse. And it's a strange when a guy has, this is his eighth run of the year. He's only caught four passes, so he's run the reverse time and time again. He's a sprinter on the track team. And you'll see him just step out right here. He just about gets around there, but now we see three or four times he hits that line. But I tell you what, uh, they almost caught San Jose State uh, thinking he was going to go out of bounds. A lot of times you'll do that. You assume he's out of bounds, and the guy tight ropes it and makes yardage. And Benzinger didn't need to step out of bounds. There was nobody there to pressure him. He's a, also a member of the year on track team, so he could have gone. 59 seconds to play. Raul uh, showing blitz. Here he comes. They draw right over the hole. He left. Patton picks up. Not much. Tell you what, if he could have made a quick cut to his right, though, he'd have been down into the inside the 20-yard line. For some reason, he didn't make the cut. He went right into the defensive man who had his man set up and blocked. Ryan Razdick made the tackle. Eastern Michigan calls a timeout. They now have one timeout left. The Spartans used all of theirs on defense earlier. 52 seconds to play. 17-14 Eastern Michigan. Out of the Mid-American Conference leading the PCAA San Jose State Spartans. And we've been talking about how this game is big for the Hurons, obviously. It's also big for the MAC. They have not done well in this, uh, this bowl game at all. And there's been some talk about the PCAA saying so long to this bowl game and not going up against the MAC because uh, they've won by some big numbers the last three years, Dan. Yeah, again, you're reading my mind. I was just sitting at thinking here, looking out the MAC and the PCAA uh, written on the field at the, at the respective 10-yard lines, how the MAC has been blown out. And there's newspaper articles written. I come from that part of the country, uh, the Midwest, and uh, in Ohio, where a lot of these schools are located. Right. And there's been articles like that saying, how long will this bowl stick with the MAC if they can't remain competitive? Well, I'll tell you what, Eastern Michigan is competitive with one of the top 20 teams in the country today. Saw a graphic there on San Jose State's great year, 10-1 and 7-0 and in the PCAA. They were 7-0 last year in the PCAA. Mike Perez never lost a game in this conference. 19-3 and overall with him as their target, but they're down three with 52 to play in the first half. Third and three. Here's Gary Patton on a swing pass. And he's going to lose yardage. Now it's fourth down. Barry Kidney, senior linebacker from Chino, California, the Spartan top tackler coming into the game with 99. Saw to it that Patton didn't get much. <laughs> yeah, they had that well covered. They really, they put in a tight end. Rob Fogarty, a backup tight end, as a split receiver on that side. He just came down and cracked back and crushed the outside linebacker on that side. But uh, I would imagine the rest of the defense read the, that extra tight end being in the game for blocking purposes. San Jose State is out of timeouts. 13 seconds to play. And this will run out the first half. Let's say call a timeout and let Lop kick a long field goal. That's probably what they're doing. They're waiting now. Arkema calls a timeout. The ball is on the 43-yard line. If they want a field goal here, this will be 60 yards. Now, I am told this guy in practice made one from 70 yards. His long this year, 51 yards. He has made only one of six, and they use Lop only when the field goal is in length of... Uh, 50 or more yards. Well, he could kick him plus 50 in the spring. He kicked a 51 yard. That one that he did make was 51 yards. And in the spring game this past year, he kicked three for three, uh, one of them from 50, another one from 46. So he's got the leg and he's got a little bit of breeze behind him. Not much, but uh, he's going the right direction. But 60 yards is yeah. a long way to boot it, even though even with that tee. Well, certainly Harkin figures what the heck. Yeah, I mean, I mean the worst thing that can happen is they block the kick and go all the way in, which is pretty bad. But <laughs> what, what are the odds of that yeah, happening? Yeah, I guess that would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? <laughs> John Saunders is standing by. Back in our studios, I'll be with you at halftime in a moment. But first, Lop from 60 out of the hands of Adams. Lop only a freshman. Short. That's going to be well short. He won't even make the end zone. That lands at the three yard line and that ends the first half of play and we have lined up for you a good second half the Hurons certainly played a very strong first half they lead the favored Spartans by three at halftime now as I promised John Saunders in the studios and we would not want to break a promise here we are 17 14 is your score the Hurons with the lead at the half back to the California Bowl in just a moment but at halftime first of all let us go through some other college football scores and also we'll have some college basketball scores and highlights as well first of all 
Portland State facing Troy State in what was the Division II National Championship. This game being played in Florence, Alabama. A busy day in Alabama, as you'll find out. Mike Turk of Troy State pitches to Greg Harris on the option reverse, goes in from 15 yards out, and the Trojans take a 24-17 lead. Later, it was the little guy. Mike Turk is only 5'6 at quarterback, but watch here as he calls his own number, takes it up the middle, and then some tremendous moves. One there, then he takes another one as he cuts it back towards the end zone leaves everyone in his dust in for the touchdown. Turk would finish with 190 yards rushing as Troy State wins the NCAA Division II National Championship with a 31-17 victory over Portland State. Elsewhere, NCAA Division I AA playoffs. This is the semifinals. Marshall facing Appalachian State, and Marshall gets the win 24-10, so they will go on to face the winner of Northern Iowa and Northeast Louisiana, and it looks at this point as if it will be Northeast Louisiana. They have a 41-33 lead that game in the fourth quarter. Elsewhere, the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl being played at Phoenix City, Alabama, and Wagner facing Dayton, and Wagner wins the championship 19-3. They get the victory in Division Three. Back with more in just a moment, including more from the California Bowl. And also, we will have highlights and scores from around college basketball this afternoon. As you'll find out, a tremendous day at your score at the half. Eastern Michigan leads it 17-14 to over San Jose State. Stay with us. place to get a great start on your future. Now, what do I mean by this? A place to probe the infinite with astrophysicist Armand Del Sim. Maybe we are going to find in comets whether life does exist elsewhere. Is that true? Then, a place to develop one. photosynthetic medication with chemist Alan Morgan. We're trying to take tumors and shine light on them and kill a tumor with the energy that the light contains. This is the place place to join 21,000 strong from around the world who find this campus just right. Big on opportunity with over 200 challenging degree programs, but smart enough to tailor your future. See, you're learning things that I didn't think I would be able to handle. All of a sudden, I can't handle because other people are there to support me. Master your capabilities where great futures start. Atlantis 100, because two-thirds of the Earth is covered with water. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, no, it's Beer Nuts! Yes, Beer Nuts, ever ready to rescue your family and friends from snack time boredom. Beer Nuts, peanuts, there are not above the rest. Listen to the sound of a closer, smoother shave. William's Electric Shave sets up my beard, so my shaver shaves closer, and I get a smoother shave. Listen to William's Electric Shave. Mm. The sound of a closer, smoother shave. We're at halftime of the California Bowl, back there in just a moment. But first of all, what a day in college basketball. The number one team in the nation, Kentucky facing Louisville. It's only December, but this may be the biggest game of the year for the folks of Kentucky. First of all, Cardinals pressing here. Ed Davender breaks it up and hits this shot to tie the game at 15 apiece. Next possession, great repeat performance by the senior guard, Davender, behind the back and converts 15 points in the first half for Davender. Kentucky pulls away. Rex Chapman, the super sophomore, bangs that one off the glass. It's a 16-point lead. But in the second half, back come the Cardinals. Herbert Crook cans the baseline turnaround. Crook led this comeback. Later, LeBradford Smith, Moves it ahead to Purvis Ellison, never nervous, goes in and lays it in off the glass. The lead is just down to two. Two and a half minutes left in the game, and Kenny Payne buries this three-pointer. Louisville up by two now after being down by 16, but Kentucky down with a point, six seconds left. Davender with a jumper, it won't go. But Cedric Jenkins is there to tip it home. His only points of the game, and Kentucky survives to win it 76-75. to 75. Eddie Sutton's club, the number one team in the nation, and they pull out the one 
point victory. You saw Cedric Jenkins getting the job, his only points of the game. Okay, number two, the second-ranked team in the nation is Pittsburgh. They went into Morgantown to face West Virginia. West Virginia, a team that's tough anywhere, but extremely tough when they are at home. And they were tough today, as you'll find out. The Panthers thought maybe to be an easy game, but it was not to be. Steve Berger to Chris Brooks in the corner. He cans a jumper. Mountaineers take a 36-31 halftime lead. But the Panthers come back. Sophomore Rod Brooken tracks down the ball. Nobody wants to cover him, so he says, thank you very much. He nails the three-pointer, and it breaks the 50-50 tie. Panthers get into foul trouble, though. Tyrone Shaw misses. But Chris Brooks slams it home, and Jerome Lane is zapped with his fifth foul of the game. He had to leave with 10 points and 14 rebounds, and it's a two-point game. A little later, Tyrone Shaw with the ball tries to hit it, and Smith is called for his fifth personal foul. He leaves after scoring just seven points. Pitt in big trouble, but West Virginia could not convert. They were 8 of 17 from the line in the second half, but the Panthers made their free throws down the stretch. Bobby Martin 4 for 4, and the Panthers hang on to win it. 70 to 64 is the final. Freshman Jason Matthews had 17 points for Pitt, as they still stay, rather, the second-ranked team in the nation. Elsewhere in the top 20, Temple, the 11th-ranked team in the nation, a 75-66 to 66 winner over Rhode Island in Atlantic 10 action. We'll be back with more scores and highlights. So stay with us here. We're at halftime of the California Bowl. Eastern Michigan with the lead, 17-14 to 14 over San Jose State. True fans know where to find their favorite team, Stein and & Gates and Amden. Check out our complete selection. Show support for your team. Or find the perfect gift for your favorite fan. Stein & Gates on Main Street and South University and Amden at Briarwood Mall. BMWs have always been engineered to provide a heightened awareness of the road. Now there's one that also provides a heightened awareness of everything above the road. Introducing the BMW 325i Convertible. Our Cure Motors, Washtenaw County's only authorized BMW dealer. Just in time, American Express introduces purchase protection. It ensures almost any retail item you buy with the card for a full 90 days in case it's accidentally damaged, stolen, or simply flies away. You don't buy this protection. It comes automatically only with the American Express card. Membership has its privileges. Looking for winter excitement? The Convention and Visitors Bureau and United Express invite you to Fresno. Fresno, so much, so close. Halftime of the California Bowl as we continue with our basketball scores. The 12th ranked team in the nation, Florida, facing Florida State. Florida State coming off a near upset of Oklahoma, the 16th ranked team in the nation, but not as lucky today. Florida off to a good start. Dwayne Shinsey is passing back door to Lett. Clifford Lett misses, but Livingston Chapman is there for the three-point play as he's fouled. Norman Sloan says, come on, guys, it's going to get easier. Gators built a 16-point lead in the first half. Pat Lawrence buries the three-pointer with the defender right in his face, but still gets it to go. But just before halftime, Florida's best player, Vernon Maxwell, the guard, injured, trying to catch this pass, but he did return in the second half, and he was important. Seminoles come back early in the second half. Tad Hunter strips Shinsius, outlets to Brad Johnson, and Brad Johnson finds Tony Dawson at the end of this one, and he goes in for the easy two. That cuts the lead to six. That's as close as Florida State could get. Chapman's layup is blocked. Maxwell there is to follow this one and put it in easily. 79 straight games that Maxwell has been in double figures as Florida gets the easy win. 71-48, to they beat Florida State. Florida State not looking anything like the team they looked earlier this week when they had a tough game against Oklahoma. Elsewhere, the 13th-ranked team in the nation, Purdue. The Boilermakers 
They boil Ball State 96 to 47. Ever Stevens chipped in 16 points for Purdue. St. Leo and Georgetown. Georgetown coming off the loss, but they get the victory in a big way, 78 to 40. The 14th ranked team in the nation. Jaron Jackson had 16 points for the Hoyas. Eastern Michigan and Michigan. Eastern Michigan, of course, is playing in the California Bowl. Well, these guys should have gone out to watch it because they get clobbered by Michigan. 115 to 63. Gary Grant had 33 points, 24 of those in the first half as Bill Frieder's club takes it easy early on this season. Notre Dame, number 19, a tough game and a tough loss in overtime. DePaul wins it 73 to 69. Rod Strickland, of course, who just came back, he was on academic probation. He is back now, 73 to 69. He had 22 points in the game. Cleveland State, a team that's going on to probation with the NCAA, an 82 to 80 loss to Fairleigh Dickinson, and that one is an upset, if you will believe it. 82 to 80, Cleveland State takes a loss. And one other score, Virginia Tech, facing Baptist, and 110 to 65 is the finals. Virginia Tech pulls up a very big victory. Back with more in just a moment. We're at halftime of the California Bowl. Eastern Michigan with a lead over Fresno State. San Jose State. The Carnegie Foundation Doctoral One Institution, Western Michigan University, with 23,000 students, has the diversity of a large campus with the friendliness of a small one faculty dedicated to excellence, honors programs, a $15 million library edition, strong programs in aviation, blind rehabilitation, fine arts, engineering, and more. Water sciences research and support of economic development. That's Western, cheering Eastern Hurons. put on your feet determines how well things go down. Nordica, reach a new high. If you're looking for good ideas on personal finance, subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Because while there's plenty of money around, unfortunately, it doesn't come with instructions. To order, call 800-372-3000 for the journal. Ideal for gift giving. 13 weeks for just $29.75 with a money-back guarantee. 13 weeks, $29.75. Phone 800-372-3000 now for the Wall Street Journal. From helping preschoolers with speech and hearing problems to lead fuller, richer lives, to opening the minds of young adults with new ideas, to designing energy-efficient buildings that make your living more comfortable and economical. To ongoing research that helps the elderly deal with the problems of declining health. Ball State University, a proud member of the Mid-American Conference, is doing the things that touch your whole life. Following the California Bowl, we'll pick it up with some college basketball. Number nine, Missouri facing Memphis State, the number 20 team in the nation in the Battle of the Tigers, if you will. That one should start approximately around 7.30. After that, at 9.30, it will be UNLV. The running Rebs ranked 17th in the nation facing the Houston Cougars. Right now, let us go back to Fresno and the California Bowl to Stan White. It's halftime, and I'm here with the athletic directors from the two participating schools, Gene Smith from Eastern Michigan University and Randy Hoffman from San Jose State. And Randy, after 13 years at Maryland, you've gone out to the West Coast, and it must be a thrill for you in your first year to be go to the California Bowl. It's a real thrill, uh, Stan. It's, you know, I miss the East Coast, but the West Coast is a wonderful place to be. San Jose State University is a terrific university. It makes my job easier to come in here and have an outstanding football team. And the reception that we've had this year from our fans and, and supporters has been tremendous. And just to go to a bowl game is just a lot of fun for everyone. All right. Well, Gene Smith, Randy's new. You've been at Eastern Michigan for several years, and you've seen this program pick itself up from the bottom all the way to the top. Yes, it's a good feeling. I'll tell you, Stan, uh, the program was at the bottom, and Jim Harkin has done an excellent job of recruiting some uh, good student-athletes, and we're very proud to be out here representing the Mid-American Conference. Well, I know the players have had a great week out here by that famed Fresno hospitality, and we're going to go to John Wallace at the Cow Bowl for the insight on this past week. 
Even before the Hurons and Spartans set foot in Fresno, Cal Bowl Week was off on the right foot, the traditional 10K run stepping out in style. Then the champions of their respective conferences were welcomed with unmatched Fresno hospitality to begin a whirlwind of activities. The reward for being a champion unfolded. Formula race cars had a tough time accommodating some of the players, but they poured themselves into the machines and burned off some early bowl week energy. While every prior California Bowl week included a short trip to nearby majestic Yosemite National Park, heavy snow kept the Cal Bowl 7 players inside on the San Joaquin Valley floor, pinning their hopes on another, more accessible target. Yes, they practiced, in ideal weather too, but the coaches allowed them ample time to savor their championship rewards, an enjoyable series of activities including the event that remains with all cowboy participants over the years meeting the kids the youngsters at valley children's hospital being paired with young people who have struggled most often overcoming adversity not always though the battle of champions the fight for life the theme of the california bowl a great week as always and now it's to the playing field for the spartans and the hurons six days of fun is over to be remembered for years to come. Well, it has been a great week for Eastern Michigan and even a better opening half as they lead by three. At 17-14, Greg Pop alongside Stan White back in Fresno, California. You have to say, Stan, that Coach Harkema's game plan has worked to perfection in the yeah, first half. You couldn't ask for anything more. I'm sure he wishes he still had that 10-point lead he had earlier before the final score by San Jose State. But it's worked. He's kept the football away from San Jose and Mike Perez. And he's got to be happy. And I'm sure the kids are saying, hey, at least we can know we, know we can play with these guys. As Bob Foster scores the first touchdown, that was set up by a great punt return. And San Jose State came right back. Kenny Jackson scored from six yards out, tied the ball game at seven. Following a Hennigan field goal from 42, Bob Foster scored from a yard out. And late, James Saxon tossed on the halfback option to Bill Klump, and that made it 17-14. So that late touchdown you just saw scored there on the pass from Saxon to Klump has San Jose State within three. But time of possession, the big stat there, 19-13 for Eastern Michigan, and the Spartans just over 10 and a half, and the yards rushing Eastern Michigan. Yeah. 128. Well, that's exactly. Those are the two stats that Jim Harkham have felt he had to win to win the football game. Two to one in time of possession and being able to run the football to control it. All right. We should have a good second half. We'll kick it off in a moment. I was a junior in high school when I first started to look at colleges. One day, I looked through so many college catalogs, my head hurt. Finally, I narrowed it down to three choices. One of them was Central Michigan University. I decided to come to CMU, and it was a good decision. I wanted a college with high academic qualities, like CMU, but Central has something more. People take a personal interest in you at Central, and there's none of that coldness here you'd expect to find at a university this size, and I know I can get help from my professors if I need it. Yes. You have to work. You have to earn your way at Central. But you meet your challenges in a warm, human atmosphere where people want you to make it. I like that about Central.
revolution for Nike. Gravity will never be the same. From high atop Bulldog Stadium, Greg Papa and Stan White are set to begin. We're set to watch. They're set to begin. Yeah, the, we're just going to be up here half. enjoying it. And it has become very dark in Fresno, California. Most of the folks you see have not come back to their seats because they're probably getting some hot chocolate or hot coffee or something. The temperature again, 40 degrees, and the sun that was uh, out in brilliance in the first half stand has kind of dipped down. We're in Fresno, California, and it, it feels like we're in uh, Ypsilanti, Michigan, the home <laughs> of the Hurons. That's right. Yeah, this is Eastern Michigan weather right here. They got to be. Feeling they're going to have an advantage here. And, you know, one thing that they go in at halftime, these players right now are saying, hey, these guys aren't that good. You can beat right. these guys. Yeah, Eastern Michigan going in and say about San Jose State, you know, they're 10-1. and one. They beat the Pac-10 schools. They're ranked 20th in the country. But I'll tell you what, we can play with them. Yeah. We can beat these guys. And there was a lot of talk from the Huron people about just how cocky the San Jose State people are, in particular Greg Cox. We spoke about it earlier. But the whole Spartan team has that kind of Raider renegade attitude that really got this year on team pumped John Lupp will kick off to begin the third quarter and he does so very very short trying to keep it under the arms of Saxon but he can't do it Saxon picks it up and he's out across the 35 and he spilled it about the 36 yard line where Perez and the Spartans begin first and 10 Saxon again the 10th best kick returner in the nation at uh, better than 25 a return and they have tried to keep it away from him and uh, Claude Gilbert said when they kick off to begin the third quarter, Stewart back away, Saxon run up there and grab it, and they did, and they have very good field position. All those short kicks, they've had good field position each time. Perez in the first half, 11 of 17 for 133 yards. The handoff on first down up the middle. It goes, and the tackle made by Phil Seletka, a senior. No gain on the run there by Kenny Jackson. I tell you what, they've been able to stop that running attack of Kenny Jackson. <laughs> I think the last six carries now, he's got about two yards. So, you know, they've been shutting that down. Now they got Saxon as a single back. Overall for the ball game, he is now 10 for 38 yards and 34 of them came in the first series. Perez to throw, and he overfires Guy Liggins there. Kurt, uh, Keith Bertram, the linebacker, dropped back in coverage. Perez now. He's 11 of 18. Again, only 133 yards passing. The guy averages better than 338 a ball game. Well, that was a, that was one of the few bad decisions he made. He was determined to get the ball to Liggins on that play, despite the good coverage. He had Saxon, who caught uh, 61 balls his own yes. on his own this year. And if he could just dumped off to him, he'd have had some positive yardage. Saxon goes off the field. Jackson alone set back three wide receivers. Liggins moves in motion, joins Johnny Johnson. Near sideline, Perez throws to Kenny Jackson. 40, needs the 46 for the first down. And he's close, but I believe he's shoved out short. They'll mark him down at about the 44 and a half yard line. Good play there by Charles Gordon, number one. The corner to step up and push him out. Well, they're going to punt the football, but this is the one thing that Harkham is afraid of. The Eastern Michigan coach is the yardage he makes after he catches the light. Misses one, misses two tackles right there. And the third and fourth man get him down. But you have to be able to stop that in order to uh, stop this, uh, this San Jose State team. Tom Deal punted once in the first half. It went 35 yards. Here's number two. And over end, get a bound, take a San Jose State roll. Gordon picks it up. And a face masking penalty is called immediately on Yepi Pa'u'u. Another one. That's about four or maybe five that we've had today. So I don't know what it is uh, that uh, starts this whole thing going on uh, on face mask penalties but uh, they, they're coming in rashes and I talked about how the uh, Spartans liken themselves to the Raiders of the NFL and like the Raiders they they pick up a lot of penalties on defense they're calling this one 15 yards too so it's not your normal five yard one so it goes from the 25 to the 40 where Eastern Michigan will put it in play when we come back to Fresno It turns out the reason we're constrained in direction here... I, I, I really look back upon the university, and, and I perceive in my bones really the classical university, the center of learning. There, there's kind of a lifeblood flowing through the university, and it's always been the, the center and repository of learning, of inquiry, of scholarly contemplation. 
I really look upon it in that way. Even though I come from the engineering school, which is a professional school, I'd like to see us keep the common core of scholarly and for 1986-87, Dr. Artisan Davis. Atlantis 100, because two-thirds of the Earth is covered with water. Today's California Bowl is being brought to you by GTE. G? No. GTE. And I'll give you a G. Ron Adams has passed three times, completed two for zero yards. <laughs> That's the wishbone at its best, right? His team That's up by right. three. They're winning the football game. That's the most important stat. First and ten. Adams. Two setbacks behind him. Nash and Patton. Here comes Gary Patton running left and running wide. Good pursuit. Flag down. He picks up five yards. We may have a hold, though, on Eastern Michigan. Eugene Wirtz. It is holding. Our referee says. So negate a five-yard pickup, and that'll be a... 10 yard infraction bringing up a first down and 20. The Road Warriors of Eastern Michigan before the year. Gets the offense, still first down. They were given their schedule, which had mostly road games, five away games in the MAC. So Jim Harkema, using reverse psychology, had Road Warrior buttons and pins printed up, got his team psyched to go on the road, and it worked. They won four of their five MAC games away, won four of six overall. And before that, before this year, not a single team in the MAC was even a remotely good road team. And he really got his team to play strongly on the road. And now they're thousands of miles away from their home, but playing very well. Now it's first and 20. They go back to the bone, they move Patton out of it. And they took too much time. <laughs> That's going to be back-to-back -back penalties on them. Now they're moving the wrong direction. They can't afford to do that. One of the things about the, a running offense or a wishbone offense, you can't make mistakes. You can't have penalties because it's much tougher to get those yards back on the ground than it is a, a Perez-led passing attack. They have a lot easier time getting it back. Well, Rod Adams, when they, when they did throw the ball, Stan, they, he threw pretty well. He has got a, a pretty strong arm. Uh, in fact, uh, early this year, he had a great year and a better year last year wound up with 1427 yards passing five touchdowns seven interceptions he was the uh, all mac first team unanimous quarterback he does have a strong arm if they need it to throw it downfield he's not yet done that in the ballgame by design he may have to now he fires over the middle it's complete to craig ostrander a junior wide receiver and that picks up some that'll bring up second down at about 13 tackle made by phil fresh well, that just is a, a quick uh, break off on the blitz. They came with the full out blitz, and that's one of your favorite blitz patterns, just a quick break by the wide receiver, and Adams delivers the football right into the bread basket. He makes the catch, and that's what you do at the blitz, that quick set and throw. That'll stop those teams from blitzing. Before the year began, the Hurons did not have a single wide receiver who caught a pass in college football on this level before. All new guys. Adams is popped as he fires complete this time to Ziegler. And he's pushed out of bounds short of the first down. Jay Taylor and Ryan Rasnick, a sophomore out of Torrance, California, makes the play, bringing up a third down and short. Again, they come with the inside blitz and single coverage on the outside. All he does is look out there, gets a little more time to throw this time, hits the hook pattern, a good open field tackle, keeps him short of the first down, but now they're back in the area they want to be, third down and short, third and three. And those first two worked well. Split out two wide receivers, move Nash, slot right, lone setback is Gary Patton. Spartans were over anxious again, and this will give Eastern Michigan the first down on the penalty, unless one of the Hurons jumped. I don't believe they did, though. Well, that was on purpose. That was a long count. Did you see him barking, his head Certainly. moving? In pro ball, you'll get, uh, you'll get that call on the uh, quarterback a lot of times when his head moves like that, head bobbing. Offside, it's defense. 
first down. And the, court, and the center also was played a part in that. As soon as he saw somebody jump, he snapped the ball. So it really didn't have a, a snap count coming. All he did is he waited until somebody drew off sides, and then he snapped the football. If it, it probably was on four or five on down the line if somebody wouldn't have jumped off sides. But a good play and a first down keeps the drive alive and keeps even more important their hands on the football. I don't know how Claude Gilbert has made it through this entire year with all of these defensive penalties. They run Bob Foster, and he breaks the tackle out across the 40. <laughs> and a good pickup. I don't know if he broke it. He just carried the tackle with him. Talk about riding the... Uh, riding the Bronco here. He just jumped on his back and got a little bit of a ride here. Watch uh, Foster take the handoff just to get in the power play. Doesn't get much of a block. His lead blocker falls down, so he's got to become his own blocker. Now watch, he does right here. Just carries the man all the way down Greg the Cox. field. Yeah, Greg Greg Cox, Cox. Who, is, uh, who has made some big hits. Greg Cox, uh, like we said, inside uh, linebacker, strong safety, sort of a dual role. Second down and two. And off goes to the fullback Nash. Out near first down yardage, but not a big gain. I mean, real close to the first down, and that's what they want to do. I mean, they may even want not to have the first down here. Beat up another 30 seconds of the clock, get another first down, use up another play. I might have to measure this one. Yeah, they're going to bring it in now. Well, Harkeman wants the first down, Stan. He's pointing. <laughs> he doesn't buy your theory. Give him four new downs. Tell you what, I'd try to use as many of those 30-second segments as I could. I'd take another free one. It's we'll certainly going to be close, one. obviously. And they're going to be short, or did they make it by the nose? It's one of those where you got to slip a credit card in between and figure out if it hits or not. Got just the inches, they say, not even inches, millimeters, huh? You see the NFL game where I think it was Ben Rice slipped a piece of paper down in between the uh, the ball and the uh, post to see if he had the first down. Now, this isn't even a bad time right here on third down and an inch to uh, sure, take a one. gamble, go all the way, go for the big one. I don't think he will, but uh, you know, what the heck, it would be a good play. They, come, they don't have the wishbone in. Well, they have two wide receivers. Nobody's covering the outside receiver at the top. There's nobody yeah, covering him. Benzinger's him. all by himself. If Adams looks left, he's all by himself, Benzinger. Let's see if he audibleizes. No, oh, he no. runs it alone. As Dan Benzinger, number 18, lined up left, and there wasn't a single Spartan on the left side of the field. And Harkham is down there holding his head. He, uh, one of the assistant coaches kicking the ground. Benzinger should have made him aware of the fact that he wasn't covered. He's looking left, and that's where Benzinger is. Just a little quarterback sneak, but they had six points for sure. Nobody covered Benzinger, the wideout. I think the defense only had 10 men on the field. But Adam snuck for it, and they have four more downs. I can't believe that he wouldn't see that. You've got to look out at the wide receivers every play. Fullback <laughs> Nash right up behind Adams to hand off to Foster. Baru gets in there and drops him to the backfield. That's what's called blitzing to the right gap. He ran right into the play. Just another blitzing linebacker. You see him come through here. Just happened to call it right to the right area. He went through two men, though, to make the play. So the tongue and hit man wasn't able to get him down for a loss. Foster is strong enough to get back to the line of scrimmage. But that's what you got to do defensively and start gambling when you can't control yeah. them. Put them in these long down situations. Dare them to throw the football. Yepi Pau was playing in his fourth straight bowl game. Two on the junior college level. Of course, last year the Spartans were here in the Cal Bowl. And one pick, 37-7. Clear out, skip pass. Mark Ziegler off one hop. And that'll bring up a third down situation. That's just a bad pass. He had him down in a curl. Looked like he had almost short-armed that one, like he was afraid the back was going to cut in front of him. And uh, when he pulled it away, it just went right down into the ground. Looked almost like Mark Malone of the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> I don't want to be cruel, but I heard a great line about him, about how Mark Malone and uh, Larry Bird had a lot in common. They both throw great bounce passes. <laughs> Hope Mark is not listening today. Third down and 10. Steelers will have a shot at the AFC Central, then. Tied for the lead. And they took too long again, Adams did. And it's twice he has done this. I think their offensive right tackle jumped off sides. Clock also went down to zero. Let's see which one. Mr. Wirtz singles out. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Third down. 
All start. When the lineman moved to stand set, that'll bring up a third down and about 15 yards to go. The big man, Evan Hicks, 325 pounds. When he starts to move, it's tough to stop it. And all you got to do is get a little momentum and it's going to keep going. Ever so slightly, rain has begun to fall here in Fresno. That works to the advantage of Eastern Michigan. The worse the field condition, the better it is for a running team. Adams again confused, and he now calls a timeout. 9.07 to play the third quarter, beginning very slowly. But Eastern Michigan's happy. They have still a three-point lead. and Visitors Bureau and United Express invite you to Fresno. Fresno, so much, so close. comes alive in January on the ESPN. You'll see top college basketball teams, including big Monday doubleheaders with the Big East and Big Ten, plus the Super Welterweight Championship and a punching duel featuring Carl the Truth Williams. ESPN's January brings the Australian Open men's and women's finals, golf tournament of champions, the Japan Bowl, World Cup skiing, and the NHL excitement. Every day's outstanding in January only on ESPN. We are back. Greg Papa, Stan White, Fresno, California, where the rain is tumbling a little stronger than it was moments ago and now can become a factor as a number of umbrellas have popped up. Here's a third and 15 for Eastern Michigan. Ziegler and Ostrander split wide each side. Adams going to throw it downfield. No, he's not. He is really hit hard by Greg Cox. The rover back roved in the backfield that time for his second sack of the day. Well, he got pressured and made a step up in the pocket, and Cox hit him right in the face. See right here, they come with the blitz. Somebody comes free right there, makes him step up, and then Cox just cleans up on him right there. But he didn't get as good a hit as it looked to begin with. He sort of got him with the arm and drug him backwards. Cox was quoted as saying this week, Stan, these guys, referring to Eastern Michigan, have a chip on their shoulder that's going to get knocked off it was the whole thing about each team performing a rap song at the steak dinner they had here Monday, which got Cox fired up, which is not hard to do. Here's a good kick by Benitez. Going to bound inside the five and roll in the end zone. And Perez and the Spartans will begin from their 20 with 8.18 to play. Third quarter, still Eastern Michigan leading San Jose State by three. Complete Computer Center, providing practical business solutions that put you in control of your future with professional sales consultation, expert training, full technical support, and reliable service on every system we sell. Complete Computer Center helps you face the challenges of today's business world. Complete Computer Center, Michigan's largest independent dealer of IBM and Apple computers, providing effective business solutions since 1976 at 413 East Huron in downtown Ann Arbor. Hi folks, I'm John Cologne from John Cologne Chrysler Plymouth Dodge in Pinckney. You want to save some money on your next car or truck purchase? Get your best price from your dealer. Tell him you're coming to see John Cologne. He's going to cut it a couple hundred dollars more. Then come on down and see me. Let me show you how much we can save you. And remember folks, John Cologne Chrysler Plymouth Dodge in Pinckney. Just a little out of the way from high prices. Well, Mike Perez and San Jose State have a history the last couple of years of uh, comebacks, some big 
second half. Victories late. Long way to go here at 18 to play. They'd like to start the comeback now as they flare it out. And the ball is batted down to the line of scrimmage there by Louis Cafazo as they strung it out. And he made a nice play stepping up there, the sophomore from Hamilton, Ontario. Yeah, if you can pick that off, he walks into the end zone. Again, that read screen, it's almost a backwards throw. It's close to being a lateral right here, even though he did hit the ball. I don't know the official, I didn't see if he made a call or not, but uh, it's real close to being thrown backwards, which would make that a free ball despite the fact that it hit the ground. And San Jose State really has abandoned in the, the run game. And they're a pretty good running team. And Jackson and Saxon presence thrown almost every time. Here he goes again. Complete to Kenny Roberts. And he's down at midfield. The catch and the run. Something Jim Harkamal was concerned about. The yardage the Spartan receivers get. Mainly Liggins. That time Roberts, though, Stan, after they catch the football. Well, again, Liggins in motion draws a crowd. You can see them all start to come up on him. And they just hit the slant pattern to Roberts behind the linebackers. The linebacker has got to, once Liggins leaves his zone, stay there he can't be running out of his own to help somebody else and open it up for somebody like kenny roberts tackle made by anthony johnson big pickup though here's perez on first and ten firing it is caught out there on the flat is guy liggins who was having a quiet game every game that he has played in san jose state for san jose that he has caught at least four with that catch liggins now has caught three and that time he slipped to stand. Certainly the, the field is becoming a factor with his light rain falling. Well, we noticed it was a little bit slippery even before the game started. So if it gets wetter now with this rain, uh, it's even going to be tougher. But the slippery part, as long as you got a ball to throw, sometimes works to the offensive advantage. Flag down. Mike Bernard came out of the stance. Now they're swinging at each other. They're playing Spartan football as they shove each other late. Left guard and left tackle, both of them jump yeah. back. That's going to be five yards. Perez was a guy coming in there pushing people away. Jim Carter, maybe senior, and uh, Mike Bernard both jumped. May be able to bench press, but uh, I'll tell you what, everybody on that defensive line for Eastern Michigan bench press over 400 pounds, so quarterback's got to watch it. Well, that's one thing Jim Harkema talked about yesterday in our meeting with him stay the fact that uh, San Jose State is a quick football team but he didn't think that they, their, their size was much of a factor he thought his team could uh, win the physical battle he wanted to keep the game close he talked about the space relationship San Jose State is a quicker team obviously but he thought it's his guys could, could play with them muscular wise we have a dead ball ball start against the offense we have a dead ball a personal foul against the offense wow. disqualification 20 yard penalty one of the spartans has been kicked out of the game so it isn't perez huh <laughs> yeah he was involved in that let's see which one they do uh kick out who gets ejected well, james saxon's walking off the field i don't think he was involved though you would think one of the line people was involved they will see it on the replay Jump off sides. He slaps him on the helmet. Knocks the guard. 67, Jim Carter has been kicked out of the game. Oh, right there, a punch. Yeah, Carter threw a punch and hit Eric Miller right in the face. Yeah, that, that's an automatic disqualification. Things so, are starting to heat up. Carter's collegiate career is over right there. The senior is done. First team PCAA player this year kicked out. And Mark Frederick, a junior, is forced in to play the left guard position. And the Spartans went way back on that play. It was second and uh, four. Now it's second and 25. Now they have to rehuddle up again. That's the big draw screen down now on this uh, this type of situation. You get everybody dropping back real deep, which I'm sure Eastern Michigan will do. You try to dump it over the line, get a blocker out, and break a tackle and get a chunk of that yardage back. Again to Jackson. Great move, and he loses his footing at about the 38-yard line. He really put a great move on Scott Weika and then lost his feet. Well, let's question whether Weika leg-whipped him, though, here. You can't tackle with your legs. You can't trip. See what Weika does right here. See if we can get it. Ah, mm. ah, I think that may be called tripping, don't you? That was close. Conrad, <laughs> Conrad Dobler was also here talking to both teams 
the other day at a luncheon. Maybe he uh, told Waika one of his old tricks. Yeah, well, that was one of the best that he had. Yeah. He was better off tripping than he was trying to block him. Well, you were in the game had. when you played with the Baltimore Colts when he leg whipped, uh, John, actually the Cowboys there playing that game, John Dutton, one of your former teammates, <laughs> when Dobler was a Buffalo Bill. And now Mike Perez is forced to call a timeout. We have a very, very slow-paced third quarter going on here, and we'll take a timeout, too. 6.17 to play in the third. Eastern Michigan still up 17 to 14. Delta Airlines flight attendant Irene Lockwoody loves to fly. Are you still here? My son was supposed to meet me. Well, I'll wait with you. That kid is always late. What she loves most are the people she meets. He must have gotten caught in the rain. He was even born late. Joey! Ma. Irene is what Delta's all about. Irene. Yes? Are you married? Yep. Two kids. Late again, Joey. You love to fly. These days, you gotta stay on top of things, because times have changed. This small pickup, the Ford Ranger, now outsells Toyota. And what's more, Ranger has more features and a lower sticker price than Toyota. Features like tachometer, interval wipers, and light group. Plus, Ranger's got a fuel-injected engine. And to top it off, Ranger has a six-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty. Toyota doesn't. Sorry to burst your bubble, Toyota, but Ranger's on top now. Now, during Ford's leadership celebration, get $500 cash bonus on new Rangers. Switzer, I'm going to show you the way football should be played. Johnson, I'm ready. Give me your best. Enjoy the thrill of real college football action. Oh, I thought you came to play football. With the VCR College Bowl game. Oh, yeah, you call that your best? Punt. Go for a field goal. He's Score the winning down. touchdown. That's two out of three. Oh, I just proves you don't have to be a football great to play great football. Look for VCR College Bowl football wherever games are sold. Also look for VCR Top Rank Boxing Game, the brand new game that puts you center ring for some of the greatest matches in boxing history. It's a bitter Patrick Division rivalry. Mario Lemieux and Paul Coffey lead the Pittsburgh Penguins against the Philadelphia Flyers. Live Tuesday night at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Well, this game has been a surprise in some respects. No surprise penalty yard. San Jose State led college football this year and last year in penalty. Bob Perez's pass is blocked the line of scrimmage by Mike Burns. Big play by Burns there. And now it's fourth down. Well, they set up a middle screen to James Saxon. We thought it'd be a screen to the down before, but they went to the screen on this play. He just tries to dump it over the on-charging defensive line. See right there, Bronco Vincic just knocks the football down. They had it set up pretty well, too. Yeah, Vincic blocked it. Burns was standing next to him. Tom Deal to punt. Charles Gordon is back. Another poor effort by Deal. He'll bounce. And go out of bounds at the 32-yard line. 6.06 to play, third quarter. And the third quarter has gone very, very slowly, which Eastern Michigan is happy about. And the fact that San Jose State has not done much offensively, still hanging on to a three-point lead, but plenty of time for Perez and the Spartans to get themselves back. Well, at the slow pace is a component of all the penalties that are being called. It stops the clock, stops play. Unbalanced line, wishbone, or unbalanced left here, Greg. That means the tight end is playing on the left side of the formation. Bill Cup number 84. They run right. Pull everybody. There's Bob Foster, who scored twice today on across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Well, Adams does on the unbalanced. He sees whether they adjust defensively. If they adjust to the strong side, then he goes back weak because you got one less man to block, one less man to worry about. You've uh, made them over adjust to the strong side. If they don't adjust, then you got a man advantage over there and you go towards the strong side. So either way, you have something you can work on. Foster is now out there with Jimmy Johnson as they give Patton a rest. Go back is Nash. Here's Jimmy Johnson. He is spilled down near the 40-yard line. And some glaring going on. Greg Cox, intimidator from Columbus, Ohio. Donnie Ray, the defensive coordinator, says he thinks he's a gangster the way he plays. He's a <laughs> Columbus, thug. Ohio. Huh? Well, maybe that has something to do with it. <laughs> You see right here, yeah, they're, 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 the officials going to have to get a, get this uh, thing under control here because it's it's getting close to 
breaking into a full-fledged brawl or something like that. Yeah, Resnick, Resnick shoved him late for no reason. Yeah, these guys are out there. Uh, they're getting their butts whipped, and they're trying to uh, intimidate somebody. Well, that's the nature of the defense. Paru is going to blitz. They stop it. Adams throws. Intercepted by Resnick. He went down. The one knee went down at the 49. The flag is thrown again late. I think Paru may have teed off on somebody. That's always a good bet. Again, they never sees the free safety, Rasnick. He looks for the slant pattern off the blitz, but the free safety came off his coverage and just went right in front to make the interception. We'll see if it was a post-possession foul or whether Eastern Michigan gets the ball back. Of course, we'll see who it's on, I guess, huh? You see Rasnick again. His knee is down when he makes the interception. It's an interception. First down. No flag. Well, that's a strange one. I threw it. Didn't mean to, apparently. I never understood how that happens. Anyway, Rasnick on the interception. And the Spartans take it back at their own 49-yard line. The statistics in this ballgame will not count towards the season totals. Rasnick coming to the ballgame had had one interception. His brother, by the way, Rick Rasnick, is the offensive coordinator of the San Jose State Spartans. And now he's back to work. And they have abandoned, I talked about it the last series, they have not run the football at all. Stand very few times, 12 times the first time, but hardly any in the second. They're going to pass again. And Liggins is open behind him, but he makes the catch. Slides down, first down at the 37-yard line of Eastern Michigan. Linebackers get sucked up, and I don't know why. He just said they hadn't run the whole half. There's no sense in worrying about the run. The play action just brings the line. Watch the linebackers up here. They're only four or five yards deep. They got to get back there with Liggins. And they should be back there in that throwing lane. You can't give him that area to throw the football. Liggins is the man he wants, the slot man on play action. That's his fourth catch of the day. So that now makes it 24 out of 24 in his college career. At least four catches. Perez off play action rolls right. Where's he going? He's going the wrong way. Burns in pursuit, gets a block. He finds Johnny Johnson, and this whole play will lose about three yards. <laughs> Keith Bertram makes the tackle. Mike Perez started running straight backwards like his own, going for his own goal line. He must have been watching some Fran Tarkington films to uh, run that direction. He's lucky he didn't get thrown for a 20-yard loss. But again, the play action, they took away Ligon's outcut, made him cut back to the inside. There's nobody for Perez to throw to. He just makes uh, something happen on his own. He finally throws it to Johnny Johnson. He's probably been better off just dropping the football and going back to the line of scrimmage. And probably the only rap on Perez is, is he's not a, uh, a gifted runner. John Elway saw him play once this year and questioned whether he could throw the long ball. Perez got mad at that, says, certainly I can. I'm not a great runner, though. The middle of the ball is deflected <laughs> and incomplete. <laughs> See, Mike Burns almost got hit right in the face on that when he turned around. The ball went right off his shoulder pads. He doesn't look. He's making a drop without looking. Linebackers need to keep their eyes on the quarterback, and if he would have, he'd have made the interception. You can see, just as he turns, it goes right off his right shoulder pad. He hardly ever saw it. Now, again, Mike Burns is listed as a defensive end stand, but they, those two outside guys kind of read things, see what they're going to play, and they, they will drop back like linebackers. That's right. They can go. They got four men listed as defensive linemen. They can drop Eric Miller off. They can drop Mike Burns off and end up with a three-man rush, but here they go, third down and long. Johnny Johnson, Guy Liggins in motion. Also Kenny Roberts out there, three receivers for Perez over the middle, he throws, complete to Kenny Jackson, and he lunges for the first down before Keith Bertram pulls him down. A big third and 12, they pick up 15 to Kenny Jackson. I'll tell you what, Liggins was open for a touchdown, if you could have seen him, they came with the uh, rush. Came with the rush and went man defense. Kenny Jackson should not be able to beat the linebacker that easily coming out from right through the line of scrimmage. You should be able to bang him and stop him. It's not very good coverage by Keith Bertram. Kenny Jackson last year caught 52 passes. This year, 32. Today, he has five. And you see his numbers there, 34 yards. He's now in the eye behind Saxon. Again, Ligon's in motion. He's in motion almost every play. They hand off to Jackson. Good hole. Still on his feet. And he's down to the 12-yard line. Jerry Smith, sophomore rover back from Jackson, Michigan, number 31, finally pulls him down. Well, this is the draw play. Watch the delay draw. The back split out of eye. Every time those backs split, it's either the draw or the fake draw. 
Linebackers have to come up when they see that and plug their holes. When they stay back that far, it gives the offensive lineman time to set up, come downfield, and block and create the lane for Kenny Jackson. And now it is raining quite hard, and you see the heavy wrap on uh, Jackson's upper right thigh. He has taken some pops in this football game. 11 carries now, 50 yards. It is now pouring. Perez throws. Johnny Johnson gets a block. Carries a man into the end zone. Touchdown, San Jose State. And for the first time today, they have the lead. Well, we talked about it again. Liggins lined up at fullback, and we said the next time he goes out in motion, watch for the play action pass. We thought they might go to Liggins, but instead he turns away from Liggins, ends up hitting Johnny Johnson, who's listed as a wide receiver, but really, in fact, is a yes. tailback, and they needed him at that wide receiver position. In fact, he'll probably be the tailback next year when both Saxon and Kenny Jackson graduate but he shows his running ability that's why they like to throw screens to him just let him use that running ability Alvarez on for his third point after touchdown and he's got it and with 2.24 to play third quarter the Spartans favored by 17 today to win their second straight Cal Bowl finally have the lead on this play well, there it is you see Liggins there he is lined up at fullback they'll set up He'll go to his right. Well, that was not obviously the touchdown play. No, that's going the wrong way. There he goes. He's going out to the right. Kenny Jackson out to the le left. Johnny Johnson, excuse me, out to the left. He takes the ball. Just runs in. He runs over Menard. But, uh, you know, that's a tough uh, tackle to make in the open field like after the free safety coming all that way on a running back who's 6'3", 210. Yeah, and Johnny Johnson, you mentioned it. A great high school running back, one of the best in Northern California. Senior year, two years ago, ran for better than 1,700 yards. They played him at tailback last week, not last week, a month ago in their last game. <laughs> against Long Beach. Against Long Beach, and he ripped off uh, 59 yards and was very strong. And Claude Gilbert said most definitely uh, Johnny Johnson will go at tailback next year. Johnny Johnson's father is the fifth all-time leading rusher at San Jose State. And it is really, really now pouring here in Raisin Country, which will be good for the Raisin Growers, but not good for San Jose State's pass attack, you would believe, but also that can help a, a passing team with the fact defensive backs have to be more cautious. What well, was it due to the wishbone attack? Yeah, yeah well, that uh, makes the uh, exchanges that much more difficult, the pitches and everything else. It always helps, I guess, the team that has the lead. Right now it's the Spartans. Here's Leonard Smith on his four. Out across the 30th. This guy's had some big run back today, and he stumbles out across his 40-yard line. 37-yard return. Leonard Smith, who coming into the ballgame, averaged less than 20 a return. And he's a little guy, only 5, 6 and a half. Well, watch the speed he hits this with. He's going full speed. That's what you got to do when you return a kick. You can't go up there looking for a hole. You got to approach it full speed. Watch him. He's going all out right there. He sees the hole, accelerates, he darts. He doesn't dance around. He makes a good cut. That one last man right there coming back from the side really left him from going one on one with the last man. You well, see it from the end zone. Sorry, Stan. Clark Smith got the game started on the right note for Eastern Michigan, taking the opening kick for the eight yards. They ran Gary Patton here on first down out across the 45 yard line. And they're going to stick with their game plan. They're not going to change now because they're down by four points, 21 to 17. They still want to control the football. They still want to keep it out of Mike Perez's hands. And all they got to do is drive down and get a score. I mean, they'd love to do it. It's a seven, eight minute, nine minute drive now. That was the first carry of the second half right there for Gary Patton. Now carried the ball 14 times for 70 yards. That's Gary good for three. Martin show blitz, Kidney backs away, so does Pauru. Patton's going to throw, and he's going to throw Patton's deep. Open. He has a man open. It is caught by Gary Patton. As he was there with single coverage against Greg Cox, who is not very fast. He's not talking a lot after that play, is he? Huh? If you want to shut somebody up, you just start beating them. That's what Gary Patton did. They faked the play. Patton, you saw him break the bone and go in motion. He just goes down the sideline, and Cox is behind him. And his speed is the question mark. Patton makes a great over-the-shoulder catch, though. That's a tough catch when you got to go over the opposite shoulder. He comes down with the football. That play went for 28 yards. Cox's speed, 4-8. He ran in the mud. Last time he was timed may cost him a shot of the NFL. They don't know where he can play. Now we have 
Bill, uh, pardon me, uh, Rob Fogarty, the backup tight end, moved early, obviously. And he held on to one of the Spartans there. That should be a false start. Dead ball, false start, offense, still first down. Again, the mistakes that you make on an offense uh, that is running the football, based on running the football, much tougher to come back from. First and 15 is tough for Eastern Michigan, tough to convert. Clock now rolling, approaching one minute to play in the third quarter. San Jose State 21, Eastern Michigan 17, playing the seventh annual California Bowl. Patton moves in motion. And the handoff to Bob Foster is hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped there on a very good line surge by Mike Hutcherson. Well, that's the companion play. That's the play they faked when they threw the ball to Patton. This time they just flipped it over and tried to run the, uh, really the sprint draw effect out of the wishbone, but just a good tackle, a good play by that blitzing, gambling 46 defense of the Spartans. Hutcherson, a big play there. He is a junior out of Las Vegas, Nevada for Claude Gilbert. This will be the last play of the third quarter. Barring a pass, and we're gonna have a pass. Maybe it won't be. Adams is flushed, and he throws. Did he get it off? Is that a fumble? Now they're calling incomplete, incomplete pass. pass. But he may have thrown that ball backwards as it skipped off the field. They called an incomplete pass with five seconds to play. Well, it was backwards, but it was because he was being hit that the ball flew backwards. He didn't intentionally throw it back. Now watch him get hit right here. Greg Cox. And the reason it went backwards is because of that uh, impact by Cox. Greg Cox stumbled. He was blitzing again from the rover back position. Had time to get his feet and go in there and lay into Ron Adams. Third down, 16 yards they need. And Harkema wants things to hurry up here with five seconds to go. I think we got a blitz coming right here by San Jose State. Third and 16. Burn them or not, better believe they're going to come. They live for moments like this. Chris Alexander had him. Adams fires. It is caught. And they have the first down before Jay Taylor makes the tackle as they threw downfield. And it was pulled down there by Craig Ostrander. Again, Adams makes the play with his own individual talents. The blitz was there. He just gets outside. Stiff arms Chris Alexander moves around, stays in the well, pocket, the and stays there. He knows he's going to get hit. He throws the ball downfield. Mark Ziegler makes the catch for the first down. They blitz three people, Alexander, Pau, and Cox, and he got away and hit Ostrander for a big play. That is it for three quarters. Our score, San Jose State 21, Eastern Michigan 17. The University of the Pacific women's volleyball team has won the NCAA title two years in a row. But winning isn't everything. We're just as proud of the team's grade point average as we are of its win-loss record. With 137 years of experience, the University of the Pacific offers a dedication to teaching, a commitment to research, and a belief in public service, making it one of the leading independent universities on the West Coast. The University of the Pacific, a quality education in a quality environment. You know the bad news. Charlie Carlson is in the meeting of his life, and his shirt is perfectly dry. But that doesn't mean he smells good. Because under our motor is invisible, he needs total protection. Sure, solid. If everyone would take a Sure not only helps protect against wetness, it actually kills bacteria that cause odor. So, Charlie, why go to work with a dry shirt and a false sense of security? Use Sure Solid and be just as sure about odor as you are about wetness. The Timex Atlantis 100, because two-thirds of the Earth 
is covered with water. The wishbone attack of Eastern Michigan versus the pass attack of San Jose State. Total yards in favor of the Spartans. But Eastern Michigan has picked it up when they need to. And they've held the ball for almost 10 more minutes. And that's the key. The less time Perez has to put points on the board, the better it is for your team. And last pass to Ziggler, the big one also. Not the beginning of the fourth quarter. First and 10 from the Spartan 15. Here's Gary Patton. He's he has gone. a ball. He's going to the end zone. Untouched. Eastern Michigan has the lead back. When you blitz, you can sure get burnt. Their linebackers, again, did not keep their eyes open. We've talked about when you're blitzing linebacker-wise, you cannot just let everything fly. You see Mark Cox run right, Greg Cox, excuse me, run right by Patton. You don't even need to block the guy. Just let him run himself out of the play. It opens up the hole. You get past the first wave. And Patton walks in the end zone and does a little bit of a He knows dance. that dance. Watch Cox right here. Just runs right by him. You don't even have to block him. And where does he go? Right back to where Cox left. And that's something the Eastern Michigan coaching staff told us. Greg Cox will oftentimes over pursue and you can catch him on the misdirection plays which they did right there. That carry by Patton is second of the second half and the extra point is no good. And that's a big miss right there by Hennigan. He had missed three all year and only one field goal he has missed all year. But that one leaves San Jose State only down by two. A field goal can win. He played five seconds the fourth quarter here on Zonsa. Come in and visit LaFontaine Brothers Arbor Dodge for a huge selection of the finest new Dodge cars, trucks, vans, and caravans, all backed by Chrysler's seven-year, 70,000-mile warranty. The LaFontaine family is committed to your satisfaction. Come in and see for yourself. Arbor Dodge backs up each purchase with their own friendly service department and quality body shop. And for your convenience, Arbor Dodge is open year-round on Saturday and three nights till 9 p.m. Come in and let the LaFontaine family satisfy your family's transportation needs. Experience the sights and sounds of the jungle in one of the country's largest pet shops. Tropical adventures come alive at the age of aquarium. The wildest selection of colorful fish and dazzling birds from Asia, Africa, and South America. And the most advanced saltwater system in the Midwest. All in a healthy, professional, and captivating environment. Experience the exotic at Age of Aquarium on Packard near Platt. You never know what you'll find. Today's California Bowl is being brought to you by GTE. G? No. GTE. Gary Patton runs 15 yards in the first play. In the fourth quarter, Eastern Michigan has the lead back. 23-21. Capping off a six-play, 58-yard drive. Took him two and a half minutes. It was started by the big return, the kick return by Leonard Smith after San Jose State on Kenny Jackson's touchdown run had taken their first lead. But the extra point was missed by Hennigan. It's 23-21. And Lop kicks off short again. Fielded on the fly coming in by James Saxon. Stiffs arms. Anthony Johnson is pulled down at his 33-yard line. That's about the best you can expect with that short a kick is to keep about the 30, but that's great field position. They really need to do something to get deeper kickoffs. I don't know why they don't teach the kid to run up and kick the football rather than just taking a step or two. Well, I think they're purposely kicking short so they don't let Saxon get a full head of steam, but I, this is that's questionable yeah, strategy. Yeah, it's working against you when you keep giving them the ball between the 30 and the 40 all day long. Just tell them how much respect they have that Saxon can bust the thing and go all the way. He does have a great return average, but it's long this year, not that, not that long. They run up the middle. Kenny Jackson pulled down. After a gain of about three. 14.35 to play. Fourth quarter. Rain falling in Fresno, California. I'm sure Eastern Michigan will continue to stay with their game plan. As we've talked about, they'll just they'll give them the short stuff. They just don't want to give them anything cheap. Play action. Ball is caught by Johnny Johnson. <laughs> he picks up three. Played that one much better than the touchdown play that he had earlier. The very same play. They quit. They faked the run into the uh, 
line and hit Johnny uh, down the sideline. Good tailback at the wide receiver position, but he does scramble and get close to a first down. He's just two yards short. As the rain now starts coming down real heavy. I thought it didn't rain in California. That's Southern California oh. in the summertime. <laughs> it pours in California in the winter. Makes up for the summer. Third and two. Here's Kenny Jackson. Fumbles the football. Eastern Michigan has it. Bronco Vincic. What a play by Bronco, who has made some big plays behind the line of scrimmage, and none bigger than that one. Sure, none bigger. That's right. Again, did the rain have any effect? Yeah. Did the rain have any effect on the ball? Looks like a pretty good pitch. He just doesn't catch the football. He's looking up instead of looking at the ball. I don't think it was the rain. I think it was his eyes. You're looking up to see who's got there and where the blocks are coming from instead of catching the football, which is the first thing you have to do. He put it on the ground, and Eastern Michigan gets a huge turnover. Bronco Vincic out of a town called Fruitland, Canada. Jeez. A guy named Bronco from a town named Fruitland doesn't jive. 23-21. Eastern Michigan trying to salt it out now. 13 and a half to play. Here's Foster picking up a few. And you better believe the Spartan defenders start going for the football to strip it. A lot of time left, but the ball right now is a factor as far as the slickness with the rain really coming down and being a factor here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and I think if you're in the Eastern Michigan sideline, you're thinking, hey, if we score and go up nine points with the rain coming down, we got to look pretty good. Eastern Michigan players kid Bob Foster that he runs like Eric Dickerson. I wouldn't mind being kidded by No, uh, I think like that's that. a pretty good comparison. Talking about his style. Yeah. He has put up some numbers today, two touchdowns, but not the kind of yardage, obviously, as Adams keeps it on the option out across the 35. Again, they went unbalanced to the right and came back to the short side. Probably part of their game plan. They've probably seen some films where San Jose State has adjusted to the unbalanced and left themselves weaker on the short side. All day long, they've gone unbalanced and gone back short. Ron Adams coming into the ballgame had run for almost 400 yards, third leading rusher today. He has carried nine times for 31 yards. This is third down and eight. Nope, the blitz. Uh, who, who is coming? They run the option behind Foster, but he has it, but not the first down. 29-yard line there to bounce. Bill Frash steps up again. He is a very strong rush defender, and he made the play there. Again, a good block on the corner by his by Gary Patton allows him to go free. See Pat knock him down right here. Watch him. Cuts him right down to the ground, or at least gets him down where he can't make the tackle. Foster just gets close. I think they may go for it in fourth down here. Now they're going. Now they got the man in to kick the field goal. And it's Lop. Is it Lop or is it Hennigan? No, it's Hennigan. You're right. It's Hennigan. It's 21, not 28. This will be a 46-yard field goal for Tim Hennigan. He made one early in the game. He's at 10 of 11 this year. It looks long enough. And it is no good. Just one. So San Jose State stays within two. 11.57 to play. Fourth quarter. Playing the seventh annual California Bowl. And the Mid-American Conference right now leads the PCAA by a couple of points. Sheridan Smugglers. Fresno's mobile four-star rated inn offers you more than you dreamed at less than you thought. A relaxing pool and spa set in a park-like landscape. And many guest-pleasing extras, exercise and weight room, free satellite TV, in-room coffee, room service. You'll love the life of Sheraton Smugglers.
sports news, turn to the experts. Experts who take you wherever sports happen, whatever time of day. ESPN Sports Center, America's Sports Authority. A driving rainstorm, rainstorm here in California. Somewhere over the rainbow, a pot of gold. Stan White told me to say that. Down the middle of the ball, it's complete to Clumpy, breaks the tackle, and he dives to the 46 of Eastern Michigan. Tom Menard, the junior. Free safety put him down, but Perez hits it big. Again, that's uh, that's too deep to allow. That's too easy. The defensive man have got to make a play on that. He has nobody running him off. He's just got to come up and hit the tight end. They had three, two other guys shorter than the tight end. And the tight end's not a guy that's going to threaten you deep. You should be able to come up and at least break up that pass. Well, you would think Perez's numbers would be nowhere near as strong as they are. 22 of 32 for better than 250 yards. Dex in it. Inside running and bounces outside. Scott Weika. Sophomore linebacker makes the tackle. They have a young bunch of linebackers. Anthony Johnson, a freshman. Wyke is a sophomore, and Keith Bertram is a junior. I'll tell you one thing. If you told Jim Harkema you could go into the fourth quarter with 11 minutes left and beat two points in the lead, he'd have taken it in a second. That's exactly what he said. Keep me close in the fourth quarter and give me a shot to win there. The only negative right now is that missed extra point. And seven. Over to Danny Jackson, first down. Danny Jackson spins 31 yard line. Something's Charles wrong. Gordon made the tackle stand. Yeah, something's wrong when there's nobody over there within 20 yards of the receiver. They had a, uh, Charles Gordon had to come up from 20 yards deep as he was catching the ball at the line of scrimmage. Perez is now thrown for 270 yards, 23 of 33. He's pacing the sideline, saying, hey, just hang on, hang on. There's only ten and a half minutes left. William McLeod, flanker screen, breaks a tackle, and he dives first down at the 20-yard line. Again, Tom Menard, six, Brian Carter, 32. That's the play they used for the touchdown to Johnny Johnson. This time it's McLeod. Faked it in there. Just good pursuit from the inside. Saved a big play. See, Wyka comes in there. If he doesn't slow him up, then the next guy can't make the tackle. So, tell you what, you got to keep coming and keep coming because these guys break a lot of tackles. You got a lot of yards after you caught the ball on that one. That's been the story. I mean, Perez is throwing the ball laterally, dumping it off to his back, throwing short. These guys have broken some tackles. Now Saxon bounces it outside. Now bounces back in. Takes a hit and spins down for five. Anthony Johnson popped him pretty good for a 207 pound linebacker he really hit James Saxon Saxon's very tough I tell you what he made that all on his own it's just the counter play and it's stuff at the line you see the men coming from the outside <laughs> although Hefner gets hit right on his back see right there Menard makes a good tackle right there hits him hard spins him around and down San Jose State's offense probably will have uh, five guys drafted in the National Football League Perez Liggins Saxon Mike Bernard and also Kenny Jackson, of course. Here's Saxon inside, breaks the tackle, touchdown, San Jose State. Saxon throws one earlier to Clump, and now he busts one up the middle. Well, it reminds you of the one that Gary Patton just ran, just broke the first wave and walked into the end zone. So many times they've run this on play action, this time they just give it to him, the trap play. I think maybe they overlooked it, looking for where to see the ball was going to go off the play action. They give it to Saxon, and that's too easy, just walking in the end zone. 16-yard touchdown. James Saxon with 9.36 to play. San Jose State now leads by four. Going for two. That'll make it six. Probably going to try some type of pick play in motion with Liggins. Saxon, Saxon behind. Play to Saxon. Flag down. But they were going to. They're going to call a new play this time now. Their offense is so diversified. Penalty's going to be against Eastern Michigan here. They have a dead ball. Offside against the defense. Half the distance to the goal. They obviously lined up in the neutral zone. Now what do you do? Do you change and go to a running play? You only got a yard and a half to go. 
With their offensive people, I mean, you put four wide receivers in the game, Sting, how do you possibly cover all those guys? I mean, well, this is one area you can cover because you don't have to worry about them going behind you. You stay in front of them, but the fear here is being picked off exactly. from one man to the other. And that's how they've, uh, that's what they were trying to do with Ligon's in motion that time. And they do that a lot. I mean, that's a big part of their offense is the old basketball pick up. Now it's a power eye. Three backs behind Stewart, Saxon, Jackson. Pitch to Jackson. Flag is down again. And this play never even got off the ground. Again, a flag down before the snap. Tell you what, they had it stopped, though. It's a bad break for Eastern Michigan. Dead ball. Delay gets the offense. Oh, now back at the three-yard line for our two-point conversion. I think a delay after the other team has a penalty. I don't know, but it sure worked against the team who, uh, the, the team who could have had the penalty. These two teams do not want you to make your airplane flight. <laughs> I tell you what, Eastern Michigan had them stopped cold that time. And all they had to do right there is just, you know, make the tackle. They had three, four guys out there, but no, the play was dead. Well, I said back to the three. In actuality, the first penalty was only a half the distance right. of the goal. This being a five, so it goes to the seven-yard line. Where they'll go for a two-point conversion. Now you go back to the pick plays. Saxon lines up in a slot. They keep Stewart in. They keep the wishbone. Stewart and Jackson. Rolls off play action. Throws end zone. Overshoots Liggins. They don't get it. That's just a bad throw. If it had been a good throw, he might have got an interference call because Gordon and Liggins uh, wrapped up with each other, but the ball was thrown so poorly they didn't call anything. And by missing that, they negate the edge they had with the missed extra point by Eastern Michigan. 9.36 to play. Spartans have a four-point lead here at 27 or 23. And I'm perplexed at why he would go for two, Stan. I mean, at the situation they had there, as long as they kick the extra point and stay up by five, uh, they always kept the field goal. Last chance to put themselves up. We'll talk about this when we come back to Fresno in a moment. 9.36 to play in the game. As I was saying, San Jose State leads by four. Looking